First agenda item is additions or adjustments to the agenda. Are there any additions or adjustments to the agenda? I'd like to have one. Certainly. Um, would be a discussion of adding an item to the agenda. Hmm. I think that's already in the agenda. Is it? Full business display format, 14. Okay, that is yeah. where is, are yeah. you talking about? Is that for old business? Uh, it is. Yeah. So already there. Yeah, so if it's, yeah, so if it's already that, there, yeah, we just yeah, do it then. I covered it. Yeah. Um, I would like to add an item to the agenda for planning a special select board meeting um, for when select board member steps down, okay. and we can handle that. As item number nineteen, Royal Cemetery. Yeah, certainly. Possibly, uh, BRB. March we appointed people for the BRB, but we did not set term limits. Duncan had a question of if we constitute the BRB. Do you know if that's finalized or not, or is our BRB assumed to be more functional? I think the only question we had was assigning each of the BRB members' terms. Okay. And I don't think we've done that. No. Okay. But we do have a, a need for that that's current. I just want to make sure before things get moving that we have a legal BRB, but we do just need term limits. That's my recollection of. December, January timeframe. Well, uh, I March. Think it was on the March, March based minute. I read the minutes and it just said we appointed. We them. talked about it. Up uh, in the we we did talk about trying to establish terms, but at the March meeting we we appointed membership, I believe. Yeah. But what we have still so assume one to do year, is, I guess. What's that? Should I just assume one year and just they can they can still take action. At this point, yeah, I guess we appointed for a, what did the minutes say with regard to that discussion? Did it say there was a comment from you about whether or not we constitute a DRB and what the length is for term? And I think when I looked into it, it looks like we have to have a DRB and stagger those term limits, and then probably, you know, I guess next March, a point with. So and so, three years, two years, one year, three years, three years, four. But we did reappoint the we did current members, four members, and one alternate. Okay. So I think we're good. But yeah, we definitely, that should be on the old business list of, um, as, yeah. you know, determining yeah. the terms. Yeah. Um, well, defining the terms. Yeah. So, yeah. You already have Grove Cemetery underneath the packet, not the agenda, uh, but I did add that. While we're in the meeting, so we should be good. But it is another topic. Uh, reviewing invoices and orders. I believe those are going around. Item number three is public comment. Is there any public comment? Okay. Item number four is select board issues or concerns. Are there any issues or concerns from select board? I have a comment. I went down to look at the wayfinding sign 
about the trailhead building. I think it looks nice. I believe Kyle's having a don't quote me on the date, but a kickoff celebration for that. It was yesterday. It was I yesterday. It. Oh darn. See? That's Kyle? my public uh, yeah. ad. <laughs> Shane, do you have any issues or concerns? Only that this is my last work board meeting, and uh, you know, thank you to the people of Johnson for giving me this honor. Okay, Mark, issues or concerns? We know you have lots of issues. Some people want others. I am really interested, um, you know, but I'll do a real story about it just about the. Um, the FEMA money that's coming in and um, just how that all worked out. How, how we paid the FEMA bills and when. I think it's a short term. So we could ask that under her report. Yeah, under her. You're okay with that? Yeah. They are adjustable. Yeah. I tried. It's still. I don't really like Next it. item is planned purchases. And I do not see any planned purchases at this time. Were there any late submissions, Tom, for planned purchases? No, I called and checked around, and nobody got it. Okay. Thank you very much. Our next item is a committee report from the Rail Trail Committee. And I believe Doug is here. For once, we're ahead of time, Doug. Yeah, they're early. Doug, stop. Hand it to me on the way. Oh, in. Okay. does anybody already have one? Um, no, just receiving this. You don't have one? Oh. Have you got one? I have one. Uh, yeah. yeah, I just. Thank you. Have you got one, Terry? Yep, I do. Yep. And Tom has one. So this is a, a supplement to what you had submitted. Yeah, yeah there is a, a really, really big broad windshield thing, and this is a discussion of uh, these are things that we've discussed, and basically everything after the first one is towards the goal of well, Eva Rose came in, she's she's sitting in a position with lots and lots of people on the rail trail, knows what's happening, she's been a, a big contributor to us, and the uh, she came in to help us. Uh, determine how we can make Johnson a rail child destination. <clears throat> That's the goal. We have a mission statement from you folks, uh, and which recognizes that we have to pass this through to you. And uh, we have, uh, but becoming a destination town. And I, I want to, uh, I want to touch on, on some of the things that are, I think are really important for that. One is the, we have a VORIC grant, which is uh, we're looking for a contract on and probably pending. And uh, that is to have a safe access that, uh, from the, the trailhead to, to the village. Oh, sorry. Uh, the other, uh, another thing that we are uh, working on is um, safe, secure parking. It's how, how it, again, it's how do we make us into a destination? Where can we put, where, how can we attract people to Johnson? The basic, the basic problem for Johnson is, Yes, we're the middle of the trail, but people are entering into it and dividing it in thirds. Swanton to Jeffersonville, Jeffersonville to Hardwick, Hardwick to to um, to St. Jay. So the problem is they're bypassing us, you know. And the when they bypass us, if they if they were staying here, if they were using our our restaurants and our accommodations, which we don't have enough of. Uh, they would be spending six times as much per person than they than they than they will here. So our activities have been all directed to that. One of the things that's going to come up that will get into your valuable time is part of this destination thing. Is that uh, we have a lot of recreational potential here: gravel roads, arboretum, swimming holes, fishing spots, things like that. Uh, the Beard Park. There is going to the the state of Vermont. VTrans has done a a wayfinding guidance thing. What that what wayfinding guidance is? What you what signage you can put up? You can put up signs in the community, and we we're going to need your per, permission. 
Uh, they're not ready. The whole rail trail thing has been a work in progress. You know, we, our committee has been ahead of the curve. We lack, we lack housing uh, overnight. We lack restaurants, but everything else, our committee, I'm attending the monthly meetings and we are ahead of almost all the other committees. So um, I want to get on this for you folks. We're going to, we have lists of attractions. We'll provide those to you and we're going to want you to, I'm speaking for myself, I'm going to ask the committee. It seems to me to be a no brainer. We're going to want you folks to authorize signing. Here's how you get to the Arboretum. Here's how you get to Beard Park. Here's how, here's how you get to these other things. Now, this listing of, uh, of things that we've done is, is, is uh, um, we, I, I saw that you're having a person come in about your uh, website. Uh, Beth Foy has been working on a website for us. The, the state of Vermont has done a very, very bad job as far as, as far as setting up a website. They have fit that into like how to stay in stow. You know, they're putting it into their, when people are looking for the rail trail, they're specific. And Beth Foy has, has put together, Beth and Adrian and Kyle have put together a, a great materials for a website. We need to integrate that into the town website. And then when the state has, the, when the state has its uh, act together, we'll need to, to link from the state to our, to our website. Uh, that is, you know, again, part of our, part of our, our development. We have, uh, you know, we've got a VOREC grant we have the uh, community uh, community fund grant. We've gotten. We're doing. Adrian has prepared a, a just a top notch map map for our, our trailhead, and we've got this summary is uh, um, this listing is better. Basically, what we've been doing. It's not in a chronological order because the big thing was the first one. Uh, everything else is towards that goal. We worked really hard in attending the uh, reimagined Johnson because it was part of the push for Johnson as a recreational community as to incorporate the rail trail and other activities into it. Um, so uh, let's see, we, we, you authorized us to submit a grant which has gone in for the, the, the basically the reconstruction and improvement of the trailhead. We, we, we were authorized to submit an application for Act 250 to get steps, stone steps down to connect the old mill park uh, fields to, to, the, to the trailhead. Basically, I think that we're going to need, you know, QR codes, we're going to need signage, we're going to need outreach. At some point, I expect, you know, all sorts of things, you know, physical signs, uh, if you look at the wayfinding guidance, you find out that they have, uh, they ha you know, they, they're going to put signs on the rail trail, which are going up like crazy. They are saying what you can put on town highways and how to do it. And that's where I was talking about the wayfinding guidance. I didn't bring it with me, but I'm happy to deliver to each of you's home that guidance because we're going to need it. Uh, the state isn't ready for it yet, but we need to be ready. Um, you have... I have uh, Peggy, not I have, Peggy is is here. She may have something to say. Do you folks have questions for me? I do. Yeah. If I'm coming to um, pedal on the rail trail, do I download an app to my phone that tells me where I am and what's available? Like I don't, I don't. Valley rail trail app. You know, truthfully. They're shaking their head, yes. Yes, the uh, state of Vermont Green Fence has all three or four hours a day for, for trails on one website. Mm -hmm. You click on one and actually with respect to this trail, it even breaks it down into like four or five segments. So it will show you the town along the way. Um, and VTrans is the group that people have a complaint about some safety issue on the rail trail or if there, there have been some closures east of Danville after the last storm. Mm -hmm. And so uh, people on the Facebook page are often saying, is it okay to go from here to there? And we're always telling them to go back to VTrans. For the most up to date information, but you know, some you may have written it yesterday and something happened last night and you don't know that. And are they are they keeping it up to date? Yeah, they are, and um, and the whole idea is to try to have this Facebook page send people back to VTrans for that. I mean, you can tell them certain things like you can stay here and whatnot, but don't try to be the reporter for the people who oversee the trail. Okay, thank you. Okay, Peggy, you, when you refer to the Facebook page, are you referring to the fans of the Loyal Valley Rail yes, Trail? It's just a yeah group of people, it's not yeah. an official 
entity of the state, but it's it's very active. I mean, people yep. are often someone just spoke to today. I'm starting out. My wife's never written anything like this. You know, do you suggest where we should start? And you know, and actually, no place is really easier than the other, but that's what people think. So it's things like that. People are trying to be helpful without substituting for this sort of market official. People will this. I would think it would be easier to go downriver than upriver. You know, it's the grade of a train, right? I mean, it just this is not a whole lot of fun. <laughs> it's pretty flat, no matter which direction you go. Exactly, right? Well, for a guy like me, I'd go with the river. Well, you got to get back. <laughs> <laughs> the get down is actually from Danville to St. Jack. Right or, on the other on the other side. Yeah, that's your e-bike, Mark. That's where somebody There's picks me up. And stuff. <laughs> Very cool. You have to have them pick you up in Cambridge and drive you to Swanton. <laughs> so, so part of what we've done is uh, we've been looking at grants. You know, what do we need? We we've done lots of surveys of of you know where are the where are the restrooms in town? Where's the food? Where where are the bike racks? Where 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 do people stop? Why do they stop there? You know, and uh, there's something also called the Trail Friendly Business Program, which the the state is organizing. I went to 27, 28 of stores or businesses in town and handed them the, handed them the, re the registration they'll they can get on a map they're going to the state is going to publicize them they get a sticker you know and uh it's for absolutely free um there's this is going to be a a big deal you know and and we ought to we are starting at a disadvantage of lacking the lacking the infrastructure the location basically that people are staying overnight, as I said, in other places, and we really need to have a strong presence. I've gotten a hold of Vermont Huts, who, uh, when I called them, said that they were putting a uh, uh, planning to put a hostel into Hardwick, and I said, "Why don't you come and talk to us? We'll put you on the agenda." And and they're they're interested in that. The um, the Holmes Meadow piece is pretty important. Camping is camping is uh, attracts a different crowd than the people that are doing this in thirds. You know, people that are doing half, younger people, things like that, might be uh, might be uh, or will be interested. You know, in ca in camping and having a place like that. At some point, there'll be enough critical mass here that we will have the town will find it beneficial to have a meter and greeter in that in that building you know and and uh that person will be in charge of you know because we have the facilities for for toilets there you know you we have you know work there's going to be a need and that person might work out with uh um the with camping i've um phil uris uh who lives in johnson on up on scribner road uh, oh where Michael Hooper, what Michael Hooper's place is, uh, spent 30 years running state parks for Connecticut. And he's going to go look at the Holmes Meadow and say, yeah, how can you set that up as uh, for primitive camping for people that need to bring their tents and their stuff on their back? Uh, I've been in touch with uh, um, Seth Jensen and Seth is going to go there because Seth is dealing with the engineers on your part. And, and I believe you folks have, have gotten into, uh, you know, have authorized, you know, to consider camping there, you know. Uh, and so uh, we're, we, we've luckily got a real expert to tell us, you know, how much a fire pit costs, where you could put it, what's the, you know, do you put in, do you put in trash uh, containers or not put in trash, carry in, carry out, what, how would you set up something like this? You ran major, major state parks in Connecticut, and he's here and available. That's a lot. <laughs> Sounds well, like you guys have been really busy, and I appreciate all the hard work. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have lots of grant applications for you. It's wonderful having Randall available uh, because the the needs for this community are big. I would really wonder how we can get our community interested in providing. You know, we can do bike grants for bike racks and 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 uh play benches and things like that but how do we get the infrastructure so that we have a b and b how do we get how do we get you know how do we get what what people need for for to stay overnight there there's there frankly there's money to be made here on this you know and and how do we you know we don't have a 
or you know we don't have a business organization that's active here now that we could could convince you know but uh, you know we can't do all this heavy lifting ourselves we we need some outreach and participation from the community do you think there's a reasonable approach to try to solicit community input in that i mean could we do we need to talk about face, you know, front porch forum postings, Facebook postings uh, to try and generate that level of interest? We have uh, uh, just generally become a, 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 an ability to post on, on, on front porch forum. I think that the reimagined Johnson, this the uh, recreation as a as a economic driver is one of the five uh, items that 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 came out of reimagined. Johnson, uh, there is how to do it. I don't know. I mean, it, it's my my history is is waiting for people to come in. I don't know how to go out and do sales. We need that. So, do you have data on who's actually using the trail? Are they overnight people? Are they coming here in RVs? Are they out of state people, or are they local people that are just? I mean, I, I've even seen Duncan on the rail trail. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It, yeah. So, Kyle, well, you've seen me on the rail trail? I have seen you. Is that because you were on the rail trail? No, I was on Route 15 and you were unmistakable. We, we have a powerhouse of a committee, let me tell you. We've got great members, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. I've done all the talking. So, let me retire. Well, we, we have Ava Rose, who isn't an actual committee member, but she comes to as many meetings as she can, and she's an incredible resource because she has her um, bike tour company right on the rail trail and she is actually working with the state to kind of create the playbook for this rail trail and what its potential is, what the needs are now, what the needs are going to be in the future. Mm -hmm. So she comes and tells us pretty amazing forecasted statistics, sort of where but where we are now and where it's going to be in the future. And it's going to be right up there with the trails in the Eastern Township that's north in Quebec, where millions of riders are going to come every year and use this trail. And so it's going to, I mean, the potential is absolutely huge. And um, so, yeah, so we do get data points from her and the best forecasted data that they can provide. But there but isn't, tell, sorry. Yeah. There isn't formal data from B trans. I mean, no one is out on the trail every day with a clicker, you know, counting the numbers. But yeah, and where they're where they're, where they're coming see from. from the bikes in front of Janice Promise. I totally and, yeah. And I don't know any of those people when I walk in, which I love. I and mean, I love the fact that I don't know any of these are not local. Uh, and if you're out any day, uh, the other day we were riding from Horsewood towards Hardwick, and um, I couldn't believe how many people were out on a not that pretty a day. Um, and they're going the other way. So it, it's kind of, it's not like you'll build it. If you build it, they will come. It's like they're coming and now we need to build it. I mean, they're absolutely ahead of us in terms of coming. And one of the things just to underscore what Doug's talking about, um, people do seem to be going third to third to third rather than half, which would bring them here. But the other is places like the Sunset Motel are doing it really well because you can really get to that very easily. From the rail trail, you have to ride on the road a little bit, but just from where the railroad you know, crosses Brooklyn up to the sunset. And what people are looking for who are cycling, they're not in an RV and they're not staying long periods of time. They don't need an Airbnb with a kitchen and a dining room and a living room. And a bed. They need a bedroom. They need the old B and B, a place to sleep, a place to take like a shower, and a place to have breakfast. And for um, one night, and they don't want night. a two night minimum. And, minimum and or camping because. On a bike, you can do light camping. You can bring a light tent and a backpack on the back of your bike, and that's the kind of tenting you can do. You're not going to have an RV. And the other is the hostel possibility. It's the same kind of thing. It's a simple arrangement where you have a room, access to a washroom, and you can breakfast. So that's what we don't have. We have a lot of Airbnbs, but they're lovely in their houses, and that's more than most people want. So that continues to be. A challenge, let alone the fact people need to be providing it in third rather than half, because we're at the halfway point. We want to keep writing about that. Interesting, because I hike the long trail several times a week, and people stay at the shelters. Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, 
you know, it's always, I'm always amazed at how many people are staying at the shelters. I wonder if that's an option, something that's that primitive for bikers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, other what, Do other towns, um, do they facilitate hostels or do they actually like own and operate hostels and rooms? You mean Vermont huts? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't, well, I know of the huts that they book for, they only own two of them. Um, and they, I don't know what they're intending to do with the hostel. I was pleased to run into them, find out they're interested. They said they couldn't be ready for this, but they're really interested and they want to come to a meeting and they want to talk about Johnson for, for that. So, um, you know, we, we, we talked to Jean about hostels, you know, uh, we, we've taught, we, people have bandied about the, uh, the Peatman house or, or, or Jean where Richards. Jean Richards. Okay. Yeah. You know, about and, something at the Wollen Mills. Right. Yeah. Okay, Cause I, when the historical society did a visit there, I put that bug in their ear that they're looking for something to do with the third floor. Right. Yeah, yeah we suggested that too. Yeah. If we get safe from the trail that we should always see the big grant we can that I think something like that would probably be a fantastic use of our revolving loan fund, which you know we need to mobilize more. We have a lot of town process. Yeah, I've been interested in getting for for parking. You know, the uh, I, I've been in touch with. Uh, I'm not going to remember that. It's it's a national organization. The head of the regional New England head came to Johnson, looked at our trailhead. It was amazing. They had never seen anyone anyone like it, anything like it, and they were taking pictures because I think they wanted to replicate it elsewhere on 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 some of the trails. Um, and as far as um, where we should put parking, he said it should be in the village because right now we don't have the we don't have the traffic out there to provide the policing that for safe, secure parking, uh, parking. overnight parking. You know, and that's uh, Eva suggested to us that it'd be really important to have overnight parking because that's one of the things that people are looking for. You know, what would it take for the mill house to be a hospital? Uh, Along with the food shop. Right? Well, you have the village, it's co owned property, you have that it's a brownfield. Um, and if people set their mind to it, there's no, I don't think there's any problem to for that. And that I mentioned that, you know, to, to them because, because it, it, it's a no brainer, you know, and it would be the, it would be a wonderful start to the area wide brownfields plan. And, and Duncan had mentioned that to me too. That was operating more hours of the day than security would no longer be an issue for parking. Right, it kind of solves multiple birds, I think. So. Yeah. On the other hand, getting people into the village, staying in the village has them closer to our our establishments, you know. Um, I I thought that with our with our VORAC grant that and the FEMA buyouts that there was a possibility of uh, uh, getting bikes off of rail trail off of the off of the railroad street and down into into the property that uh, if we could reconnect to to railroad street towards the bridge getting them down into the property that's uh, owned by the that came to uh, the Tetros LLC when they acquired the uh, subway because there's a large parcel back there that runs behind all the buildings. And uh, it doesn't, at the end of the street, close to the end of the street, it does not connect back. But from Pomelo property on, there's a very significant piece. And you've got, you've got Williams, and you've got the, the uh, library, and you also have, uh, there might be another property going through a bio. It'd be, frankly, a wonderful park back there. That Tetra property is currently in the bio. But what you're saying, Doug, is it doesn't connect up to Railroad Street, which is a problem. It doesn't they, connect back at the end. Right. Yeah. It doesn't connect back. You know, I, I had a I had a conversation with a young man who graduated with Lucinda, who, who, who was willing, seemed willing to talk about something like that. And he owns property there. But, you know, I think people look going to look at that. I'd be really surprised if we could pull it off, but it'd be worth doing. It might be able to have a, you folks have a flood bench and we have a, we have some sort of a path out there. 
you know, get people out of real estate. Uh, Doug, a question I had is when it comes to housing, um, are other towns making those types of investments in that? Like, are other towns making the proactive steps of building hostels or huts or anything like that along the rail trail and well, then managing it themselves? Or well, I don't know. How are they approaching that? My, my suspicion is that, uh, is that uh, Vermont Huts is going to run a hostel themselves. I, I don't okay, know so what I don't know what the con, I don't know what the connection. Most other communities have, you know, Morrisville has housing. You know, Jeffersonville has housing. You know, right there, um, they have they have food establishments in Morrisville that are, you know, you don't have to hunt for where you're going to where you're going to eat. You know, like you would here. Rail Trail Committee um, meetings, and um, we've been told several times that we're because we have our local Rail Trail Committee that we're really one of the more proactive towns, and um, people are you know, looking to us as a as a model. But um, but we would love to yeah stay ahead of the curve <laughs> and be be ready for the, the masses when they when they arrive. We don't we don't have the the attributes that they have, you know, but we've been we know we need them. <coughs> I wonder if there are attributes that Johnson has that we could lean into instead of trying to match some of the things that other bigger towns have. And you know, one thing that I, I think the idea of having little some people call them pocket parks, but smaller little pathways in some of the new green space that we're going to have. I think that's a great idea. I mean, parking in town is great. But one thing that I've always wanted to see here in town is food trucks down on the, the rail trail there. And I think building out some infrastructure there would actually give people a reason to stop. Even if it's just stopping there at the rail trail, maybe that inspires them to drive a little bit further into town. And we've got all this new signage down there that tells them there's a little loop down by the library you can go drive, you know. So I think uh, that's where maybe we're not trying to take away from what other towns are already, you know, people are already splitting into sections of three. They're already staying where they're staying. Maybe we can find another reason for them to come here into town. Well, I there was Mike something or other parked and I, I stopped and bought a sandwich just to talk to him he the other day. And, and, and yeah, yeah, I stopped and, and he, you know, he said he, I, I gave him my phone number. He said he was going to call me. He said he wanted to end up, you know, I told him about the trail friendly business thing. And I, and I, uh, he said he wanted to end up down there. He would like to, to set up there. You know, what, one of the things, you know, we aren't going to be able to match the sunset, you know, we haven't, uh, but what we, what we do have is that the, the riders are not all the same group. They don't all have the same needs. So we need to figure out how we can attract people who would want to be camping, how we could attract other folks. And we need to show them our, we do have a really, really strong, strong web page that shows them what there is in Johnson. Gravel roads are really important now for biking, you know. So we have a we have a subcommittee of one who has her own map system, Jan Gerhardt, for, for gravel roads. So and and we could and and I think I volunteered Duncan for for that also. Um, so so we are trying to, you know, so the beard park, fishing, the, the long trail. People will come off the long trail, I believe, to to camp at some of these places. You know, it's not such a long, long hike from there. You know, uh, and to be closer to town. And if we get them here camping, they're going to come in and buy lunch and stuff like that. So, you know, I would urge you people to uh, push camping. Get your engineers straight. I would. I would. Uh, I think it'd be interesting to see. Um, how many people go to Johnson Farm Park from the rail trail and from the long trail? Because they're starting to carry protein bars yes, and stuff yes. like that. The other day I saw a whole pack of a family that was hiking end to end and they were there 
loading up. Yeah. You know, which I, you know, I uh, am supportive of them doing that because what they were doing was walking down to Dollar General. Before Dollar General, we used to see backpackers at the Grand Union and at the post office. Yep. So, uh, Grand Union. That was back in the day. <laughs> who, who, Way is, back in the who day. is here then? <laughs> that was back before bicycles. But anyways, you know, I think that it would be interesting to, you know, when I see Alan, I'll ask him, so are you noticing this? Because I'm noticing people going to off the rail trail, right next to Johnson Farm and Garden. Johnson Farm and Garden actually has a sandwich board out there on the rail trail. Um, I think that... Um, that's that's uh, important that more data. Well, Alan, Alan, when they announced that the state was taking it over, Alan was my first call, and I said, "Do you know this? You know this is this is a big deal. Why don't you why don't you uh, think about what you could do and what these people would need? You know, so Alan, Alan is Alan is seeing people there. Uh, you know, people will travel off of the rail trail. I went up to see uh, the, the, the blueberry, uh, you know, Ben Waterman. I was up giving him uh, a trail friendly business questionnaire and sign up. And he said that he had people, you know, come off the rail trail, pedal to his house, up the hill and stay overnight at his house. You know, yeah. their people will make an effort, you know. Yeah, certainly. So you want to give us another half hour? Yeah. <laughs> Anybody well, else? I would love to. We we have a relatively packed meeting, but it sounds like you'll be coming. Is it for possible for me to chime yeah. in for a second? Good luck that. Good luck to the real trail committee for yeah. all your work. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Really, the committee you. is great. It's really exciting. Sure. Uh, next committee report is the education committee. I believe Adrian's here to do a little presentation. Is there anything supplemental to your packet last minute? Um, uh, I don't think so. Not a full page edition. Yeah. Would you like to speak a little bit about the committee? That's yeah. Why board members can ask questions if they have it. Yeah. You did um, a great write up just for people in the public that are watching. Yeah. We're, well, we're doing really good. We're making strides to add more flowers everywhere we can. Um, we're trying to redirect our focus a little bit more on art um, to bring more art to different places. Uh, we're going to start looking at grants to do some illustrations maybe on the side of the, uh, the trailhead where those portraits are, maybe putting something there that could be rotated out every couple of years, um, keeping things fresh and interesting for new visitors. Um, and we're, we are going to reach out to some other committees to do more collaborating with planting bulbs, um, so I want to start going to like some arboretum meetings and the historical society meetings to see if they're interested in us helping at all. Um, and we had a very successful event this spring with our, uh, our plant swap. We met at the Village Green and we advertised it and had uh, different people from the community come and bring plants. And we all set up little tables and had our plants out and people uh, came and swapped plants with each other and were geeking out over what they were putting in their garden this year. And it was really fun and successful. Um, so I think we wanna maybe incorporate some more events like that. And uh, tomorrow night, we're going to have a big planting night where we decorate the community oven and get some mums and in, in different areas and yeah so it's moving forward and going good all right well thank you do any select board members have any questions for adrian comments oh, good luck with your bulbs i just seem to feed the squirrels <laughs> <laughs> yeah mark's looking to donate some is what he's getting at not a problem <laughs> better off in their hands yeah <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to see uh, 
more moving forward of creating new beds that uh, we lay down a lot of cardboard down so there's hopefully less weeds and they're more easily easy to maintain so that's a goal of mine for next year in spring yeah Adrian, when you talk about um trying to establish flower beds in lieu of mowing i'm assuming that's along some of the highway strips um i guess i mean like flower beds in just general areas uh just like kind of beds that are mulched and that can be, be easily mowed around and taken care of or so would those be on town properties likely, yeah or mm -hmm. okay once we get village right, permission right now yeah. there's no village permission to do any on their properties um, and one of the things we put in our write-up was one of our challenges is those those scripts. And we, I know we talked we talked about it at the last meeting, but until it is written out policy, black and white, who owns what, who maintains what, village town, we're we're not willing to go there. Either. You're talking specifically railroad street. Um. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. The green strips on the street. So would it be, I mean, I have no issue, I, and I think it's probably something we should do anyway. Um, Route 15 through the village is clearly a state highway, so the town nor the village actually owns the right of way there. It's the state. Um, in my humble opinion, all other town highways are owned by the town and are under the control and supervision of this board, not the trustee board. The trustee board, in my opinion, doesn't have any rights to tell the beautification committee they can or they can't uh, do anything there. So I, I think that's probably something we should clarify with the village, just to make sure that they understand that the town owns the rights of way. Um, I, I think, you know, I would be happy to, uh, that, that we do that. And I don't know if that takes any clarification from a legal standpoint or not. I mean, to me, it's pretty black and white. Um, yeah, I was going to say, we, we could seek legal, legal opinion if needed, but let's just ask first and start without legal money involved. Yeah. I mean, my only caveat on any of that stuff would be um, that if we're going to do plantings like like we did, well, I think I made a motion earlier in the spring to authorize the committee to do plantings. I believe that that should require the landowner's permission and approval. Certainly. Because technically, well, the town owns the right of way. The land itself belongs to the property owners to the center line of the road. So, does it on Railroad Street? I believe it does it for any town. Well, not every town is center of the road. But in looking at old maps, I believe I said that the, in the past that the town owns the right of way there. The way it looked to me is that we actually own the property, not like. Clay Hill, for example, where the landowner actually owns the center of the road, we just own it right away. That's a, that's a little unique slice. It's very, yeah, and I can tell you that from my past experience dealing with lanterers, some of them surveyed land to the center line of the road, and some sometimes it depends on what your deed says. A lot of deeds will say, like my deed says, to the center line of the road. Yeah. Um, I think lately surveyors tend to describe parcels as being to the edge of the right of way rather than to the center line of the road. There was oh. a law change in 2019 where the town could no longer tax beyond the edge of the right of way, and that the right of way is excluded. So people actually lost acreage, and that in remapping, that was a 2019 state law. Law change in how they define tax maps and taxing. But that's different from ownership. So the town is in control. The landowner owns to the center, but the town maintains control. And I believe it even that landowners have to ask permission to pretty much do everything. 
That's always been the case. Yeah. I, I, and if that was codified, that's yeah. would certainly be my interpretation of it. It's probably best practice either way to ask land, landowner permission. Yeah, I, maybe my I question just, got us too much into the weeds. Either way, uh, being the utilities that are buried there, I do think it would be fair to give the village a heads up if we're doing a project sure. in the future. That way we don't ruin any of their infrastructure, um, but our committee can do things in our rights of way. Yeah, I think that's entirely reasonable. Doug, you had a question? No, I, I, I had information. Um, having done some of the titles, I can tell you that the reason why there is the uh, almost universal lawyers look at this, and yeah, I'm no longer a lawyer, but I can just read the statute from the past. Uh, there's a presumption, if you cannot establish it, there's a presumption uh, with regard to that it's a three rod road and it's a right of way. And so, um, so it, it, it belongs to the state. That, that presumption is rebuttable. So if you can find out that this road, this land is dedicated and, and went into town ownership, then that presumption does not apply. And that would be really applicable in cases like, this wouldn't be very applicable in Johnson, but in other communities where there have been subdivisions, those subdivision approvals actually grant the right of way to the town directly. So in those cases, the landowners don't own the center line of the road, they own to the edge of the right of way. Gotcha. But in most, in most cases where roads were laid out early, you know, in the 1700s, 1800s, the presumption was that the landowners owned to the center line of the road. Well, because you can't establish it as any other. Um, I, I do think that we're detracting a little bit from the beautification committee, and this rabbit hole is based on my question. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so I appreciate it. I'm just trying not to rob time from Adrian here, and Doug has another question. Hopefully, it's not the rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> the other one, the rabbit hole? Uh, I wanted to tell you that the Bovet grant will need to know ownership issues because if they're looking at railroad street and using that, using town right away, and three steps on it, possibly that for safe access. They'll need to know that. They'll need the town to resolve it. Yeah, so I think there you go. this Part could be set. made a priority for several committee reasons. That would be great. Yes. And, and it would. It would help just be clear, clear communication, less room for error and mistakes. All right. We're talking about our old bit, old old item business list later in the agenda. Um, is there anything that you had to add, Adrian? Um, one other need we put on our questionnaire was uh, some if the town had any storage space that we could use for putting planters and some larger items that can't fit in our garages and stuff. Mm -hmm. We could do storage for a whole lot of things. Um, if the board's okay with it, could you come up with a couple ideas, Tom, maybe, and bounce them off of us in yeah, the next meeting? Earlier today, I was um, going to suggest Rec uses a lot of the cold storage, which is actually heated upstairs <laughs> uh, but i don't know how much you're looking for for space well a little more than usual because now we have <coughs> eight of those big wooden planters that are on the river street bridge that don't like nest inside each other like the plastic ones did so those are going to take up quite you know a, a spot of space yeah. there is um, that's so static i think if you guys yeah. reached out basin has a really good idea handle on the lower storage facility. There's also yeah. more space at the Holcomb House. No. Yeah, maybe in the basement of the mill, okay. the mill house. There's so there's like things around. It's just okay. You know, I think it's yeah. We're not going to solve it right now, but yeah, maybe I can yeah. build out a list and then we could figure out where it would be best. Right. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Take a field trips. So what's what's all sugared out with the village? They've got their own beautification committee started up. And yeah, I think I am going to yeah. focus less on village. Um, well, behind the scenes, we've been trying to work out relations with them, uh, but nothing has happened at a meeting yet. But we're going to be on their agenda next meeting, so 
hopefully I think I'm think I'm hearing that they don't want to have the green spaces committee anymore, but um, we'll find out more at the next meeting. But right. well, I thought you were very generous at the last village meeting. I mean, you pretty much said we'll do whatever you want, and they voted to create this committee. But now they're changing. I think because so. I think that would change the nature of the beautification committee. All you know, if yeah. Go, if they're, if they're going to do the the cold spring and in all the stuff in the village. Right. I mean, I mean, I love the work you do and the bridges are ours and well, Legion Field is ours. So yeah. I'm just kind of curious. I think it was an unfortunate situation, yeah. but it in a good way, it kind of gave, gave us refocus on other areas that could use some more work and to focus on those areas more until we work things out. Okay. So. Thank you for working on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, report back to us on that because I, I totally agree with Mark I, I, to, to the point where if the village is really going to go ahead and take over spaces in the village, mm -hmm. I would question the need or desire for a beautification committee. I, I want your feedback on that before anything happened, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it just yeah. makes a big yeah. question mark in my mind. Yeah, to re just to reevaluate what your mission is, if they're going to yeah. do what has been probably 75% of your work. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. 100%. Even well, though we own some of it, it's all in the village. 95%. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, one item, and I'm not speaking for the board here, um, but the Railroad Street Bridge, the lights and flags, when that comes up again for being redone, I would appreciate just a back and forth. It seems like it's been a yearly thing. And just because of man hours being tight and everything, I would entertain options for something more expensive that would last longer. Again, that's my opinion, mm -hmm. not the boards. Or not at all. That would be up to the board. I'm I'm just asking if there could be communication. That's it. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that at our next meeting. Okay. Um, I think some lights on it still would be really nice because yeah, it's a pretty dark area. I'm not against it at all. Yeah, I, I hear I, you. Like man hours wise, doing it every year is cumbersome for other projects. And I'm trying to get support for everybody. That's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. All right. Are there any further questions for the beautification committee? Uh, the only thing I noticed on your June 26 uh, minutes, you had some difficulty with reconciling your expenditures. Did that get tightened up? Oh, um, what was that about? Yeah, look, so we keep a our own spreadsheet of what we know that we spend and what comes in. And um, Lauren, who's our treasurer, who's not here tonight, when she went and I think asked Rosemary for her version of what we had, um, it was really different. So, but it was, I felt like it was a little too late to dig into it because it was the end of the fiscal year and we just kind of were puzzled, but sort of let it go because we did stay within budget. <laughs> so it wasn't like the, 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 the money was really off. It was just what we purchased that wasn't lining up. Okay. So anyway, we're, we, She's gonna do a different system now and check in with Rosemary rather than every six months or if we're gonna check in more often so we can catch things quicker if we're like, hmm, this is what we have a receipt for, but this is what we should get. Yeah, your minutes said monthly. Yes, or monthly. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Good, thank you. Yeah, thank you for asking. And I think there was, I think uh, we might not have accounted for taxes on some of our receipts. So I think we might have been paying for out of our pockets for taxes that so I think there was like some that yeah all right any further questions thank you very much for all your hard work and everything you do thank you, yeah. thank thank you for coming you. in yeah thank you lovely yeah where's yours we do you're right I got really excited. <laughs> oh.
would the select board like to see next month? I think touching base with. What are your thoughts, Casey? I have a bird concern, but it's about the general topic, not the situation. So, okay. if you're talking first, bird concern. Board? I wouldn't mind meeting with the Historical Society. Yeah, that's right. Next I month, and leaving that one committee. Yeah. All right. Got that, Tom? <coughs> Would have been great if you were here for public comment, Casey. What's your comment? Well, no, it's specifically about committees. So I, I wanted to put it in here and it refers to minutes. So I thought I'd be official. Uh, okay. In May, we gave a report um, and in it, we referred and, you know, I'm reading from the minutes um, about our, our need to work with the recreation coordinator quote uh, we have minutes say they but we've already been shifting some administrative work to dean given the growth of the park we need more administrative collaboration and oversight from the rec coordinator i'm going to step down as chair next july taking a smaller role on the committee the committee dot 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 the committee needs more support from the rec coordinator than is possibly current uh, that is possible with the current position that's part of a larger discussion that will begin soon so that ties directly to uh, my opinion of the hiring process and so forth through the rec coordinator that's not part of this discussion my truly large concern is if you guys say what do you need from us and you're told <laughs> pretty specifically um and then it doesn't ever come to fruition um it's not a good relationship um it makes you guys kind of look like mm, a handful of gibby and a mouthful of much much obliged and don't let the door hit you on the way out it, it doesn't sit well I, I, I know, we all know that there's more tasks on your plate than you can do. Um, my concern is also that if, if you know, you blithely say, what more do you need from us? And of course, Tom's gonna to be the one to carry it out. And he's already beyond overburdened. I don't wanna lose somebody that's experienced, intelligent, has the background that he does, but I don't want him overburdened either. Um, so on the topic of committee select board relationship, and you know, when you guys say, what do you need from us? And I tell you, <laughs> and then it sort of seemingly evaporates. I mean, I can't speak for the board as a whole. Yeah. I'm sorry that you feel this way. Um, I heard what you said, and the way my brain works is that's more money, and we were not approved by the voters this year. And <laughs> things move slow yeah. in local government. I'm talking about the process. My, my not, plan not the position. was well, your request was we need more hours from a person, right? That was part of the request. My so, thought yeah. process was during budget time, the board would discuss it because it would be a no. Maybe we can't afford more hours. Maybe we can. Maybe we can budget for it. Again, I'm not speaking for the board. Uh, that, that's where my head was at. Yeah, I, I, again, I'm not talking about, I, I know I referenced hours and needed, needing that position. I'm saying, loud and clear to my reading is the person fulfilling this position is really important to us and what the person's tasks are and so forth and that just didn't square up with the hiring process but that's again we're talking about i'm trying to say communication between co committee communication between committees and you guys and then how it relates to what tom has to do I'm seeing that it doesn't square up and it and it is a big concern. 
um, that's my piece. Well, thank you. Um, any board members can speak as well. I hear you. Okay. Everybody else that I talk to emails me. It doesn't uh, come in to air grievances during the meeting, but I totally get it and I respect your thoughts. Okay. Yeah, I, I did think this was the place to bring it because it's about committee, board, communication. So I'm, I'm fine with that, Casey. Um, and I, I would, I think I would. It's it's ironic that that you're you're raising a concern about extra communication or good communication because I think the purpose of trying to I get know. committees uh, in yes, was I to know. increase increase communication. Right. Um, I, I know. So maybe we're falling down flat on our face, but I I I honestly would say from my perspective, thinking about all of the things that you did say in your report was one. Um, because you come in and request something doesn't mean that the full board's going to agree with it and you're going to get it. That's, that's my blunt um, response. But the other piece really is I, I honestly was thinking about the things that you said much more in the context of what Evan was saying is how can we build this into long range planning for that position and oh, by the way, that probably is going to involve budget adjustments. So yeah, me personally, I, what you said was not lost on me. It was more along the lines of how can we deal with this right. in an ongoing That's future. why we're talking. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I would just add that what Duncan said. I mean, we're really trying to get committees before the board every year, if not more often. Just, just to open that chain up. And, and a piece of communication is you did it here, that's great. Um, but you, you can communicate seven days a week with the board. Okay. Rosemary, are you ready now? Oh, yeah. I have a quick question. Settle on the next report? Huh? Could you settle the next report next week? Uh, we talked about the historical society. Would you prefer your spot? It's not next month. It would be next, November. Next month. But we could. Yeah. We could have the planning commission and data of the historical society. Except Certainly could. Those changes. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. You think that works for the historical society laws? I can't. I know you can't speak to them directly, but you just don't. <laughs> Michael is suggesting two reports next month. Does the board want one or two? So it would be historical society and planning commission. I suspect that one is going to take up a fair amount of time. But... Well, it's historical society is going to take up that much time. But... I have no idea because I haven't thought about it in the Let Let's stick with just the planning commission and we can meet with the historical society in November. Are we, you good with that, Mark? Yeah. You good with that? Right. Okay. Got it, Tom. Planning Commission. Okay. Would anybody else like to speak before Rosemary's report? <laughs> Rosemary, we'll try not to interrupt you. Budget status report. I believe Mark has some questions about flood funding. Thank you. Really? That's awesome. So, Rose, Rosemary, that's wonderful. How? 
I, do, I can't wrap my mind around how you pay the FEMA bills. Um, can you explain to me just a little bit? I mean, where did you find the money to pay the FEMA bills to get us paid back? Did it come out of? I don't know where it came out. It was all. <laughs> yeah. Probably Evan did it. <laughs> yeah. 10 percent interest. Do you have this? Can you give me just a thumbnail sketch of how, how you came up? I mean, our total FEMA expenses were pushing half a million, right? Yep. And I know we have cash in the cemetery funds and cash all over if you would come. I well, just... luckily this year we had we haven't done any paving, so that was a hundred and some odd thousand. So that you that you borrowed from the paving fund. Mm -hmm. You're basically able to pay for everything out of the checkbook. Yes. If you will. Mm -hmm. You can and we have our uh, tax anticipation money. Mm. That's a couple three hundred thousand dollars a year. One. It's in a reserve fund. Yes. Yeah, but we got an opinion on that. I believe, right? And we talked about it but way back then. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah. So basically, you will reimburse whatever account you spend money on. And so, when you look at this, the emergency management fund helps a little bit. A little bit, because that's got mm -hmm. 7000 in it. Yeah. So, when we look at this sheet, that's basically taking into account the fact that we, where, where will the, where will the 200, well, that's actually in the fiscal year. Mm -hmm. So, you won't see that. So I'll show that as revenue this year. Anyway. We'll see that in what, November of 2025. Area. Yeah. Is, is it fair for me to ask a week? Here. Get them up and stuff. Are we going to make a profit off of the FEMA reimbursements? <laughs> yes. That was a. <laughs> Tough question to answer. The emotional you, you toll. You do not have to answer that. Right, right, right. You know, yeah, really. there, there's a there's a great way to move forward from that, and that is to think about the people who are affected most by the flooding and make sure that that profit is directed towards those people. There's there's a way to phrase I'm leaving though, you so you know, thank you easy for easy for me to say. That. Yeah, why don't we give everybody a lot of money? Do the income that comes in greater than our expense represents the time that our employees took out of their normal duties to handle the disaster. It's a really good way to put it. Very diplomatic. Very well said. Is that fair? And we still have the library to deal with, so we don't. Yeah. That's still un still un I got I you know, you say that. I don't know that. You know, I just don't know. Trust me, FEMA is not going to reimburse us for more than no. other right. expenses are. And 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 the but what about the and then you add in the insurance and I just just a uh, just a basic question yeah because we haven't got paid for like all the garbage and a lot that was tens of thousands of dollars I yeah. thought the state reimbursed us for that no I don't believe so no I think part of that was Cat A that came in Monday wasn't it did that not include those I didn't I look at every specific I think line it was item. emergency response, cat A, cat B, and I think we're waiting on the cat C, the cat E, and then cat C is TA time and case and strong time. Yeah, I think that's where all those cats have gone. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly it. They're missing everyone. Okay. Okay. Is there anything that you'd like to go over or point out in the budget yeah. status report, Rose yeah. Mary? I don't think so. Revenue was good. Mm -hmm. Expense was lower. Lower, yeah. People are generally paying their taxes. They're not too too much delinquency. So far. there's some. I'll get that report out to you next month. So the bottom line is, after applying all of the uh, reservations in the town report, mm -hmm. we're going to have balance left, uh, uncommitted reserve of two hundred twenty one ninety eight. Yes. Don't get any ideas now. Well, this is this part of the purpose of what, of yeah. what we got to do. You know, we got to figure out what, what what to propose. I guess we don't have to do that tonight, but at some point we need to look at that total and come up with ideas of how we're going to apply it next. Year. So, 
I know where you want to put it. Well, I want to give some, I want to give a half chunk of it back to the taxpayers if we do that. Yeah. But certainly. If we gave 20000 it would reduce that bond payment. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. What? <laughs> if we did a 30 year bond, it's 20000 a year. So if we use 20000 back, it would be. Hey, for you. <clears throat> In Rosemary, the, the items that you get is Union Bank reappraise all are those all current balances as of June 30th. As of June 30th. So, what I'm looking at on, on page two, about halfway down, there's like Union Bank reappraisal, and those are the cash balances in the various reserve banks that we have. Which that's that top item is the ninety-seven seven sixty-four. That is the reappraisal reserve fund. Mm -hmm. right. you that's have some, good. You have some of this money in one of those high interest accounts. That's my little fetish. Yeah, Some of it is yeah. jumbo for Yep. Good. I believe I would entertain a motion for the board to approve I would, I would the reservations nice. as presented at town meeting Sorry. and in this document. I would make that motion. Now. Your your reservations, proposed reservations, are the exact same as what we said. This is what was approved last year. This is what was approved. This but don't we actually have to make a formal motion to move the surplus? I think that was approved by the voters because they approved the budget, right? Mm -hmm. So I think those are okay. I think what we would need to do is figure out what we want to do with the 221998 for next year's budget. For next year's. So we don't need to do we that. Deal with yeah. that and tonight, November, December, January. You know, we don't have to deal with it tonight, but we should definitely be thinking about areas that we want to propose that those reservations. This is and yes, I suppose we could do that during the budget, but because ultimately that will need to go to the town for as proposed reservations. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't see where I can read it. So I guess just motion to approve the sheet. We even need that. Uh, it's set there for signatures. But, but that's for proposed reservations. Oh my goodness. I don't even need to sign anything. I don't think. I think we can accept. If you're comfortable with. I take back my motion. Perfect. Unmoved. I don't think you got anywhere. Yeah. We can just accept, yeah, I mean. accept the report. Thank you for the report, Rosemary. You're welcome. You don't have to sign a thing. I swear Not we had tonight, to deal with anyway. a couple of years ago. Well, I have a request to pay their permit from um, Sudoku for the um, yearly. It's a homecoming day at the college, which is on September 28th. And I'll approve unless I hear any objections from the board. Board have any questions? We do it every year, right? Mm -hmm. Approved. <clears throat> Anything further, Rosemary? Sorry, I guess I complicated that process. Well, can we, can we all of the minutes reflect that we accepted Rosemary's um, year on summer? Are you good with that, Donna? Uh -huh. Further questions from the board? There are none. Thank you very much, Rosemary. Randall, our next item is your update. And you did a great write up which I really only have one straight question about, but the board can ask questions if they have them. 
It's very long, so. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, yeah, top left. He's not speaking. Are you you want to ask Randall? questions? For, what's Whoa. that? Okay. You were muted, and then all of a sudden you oh. showed up. Sorry about that. Um, so thank you for the report. Um, I had one question, but I was asking the board if they had any other questions first about your report. Or if there's anything else you want to touch base on, this was concise and, and a good report. Uh, yeah, I do want to touch on a couple of things. There was discussion earlier about the rail trail and data. I think it was Mark asking about that. And I do, I mean, maybe it's, maybe it's already, it's not news to you all, but I did reach out to LCPC in this earlier this year to get a trail count data for the rail trail and believe it or not, the most recent data they have is from 2022 uh, for, for whatever that's worked, but they did have, they did have trail counters out there in 2022, in the summer, in July of 2022, the week of the week ending on July 15th and the week ending on July 22nd. And they had, I, I don't know the exact logistics of how they set it up, but I know they had two counters kind of capturing at the, at the, um, at the trailhead in Johnson. And for the first week, they captured, uh, let me see here. The first week was pretty dramatic. I mean, again, to me, to my eyes, it's pretty dramatic. The first week they counted 805 and 745. So when I give you both of those numbers, that could be redundant counting of people going one way up the trail and coming back up the trail, but they had the two numbers just to kind of capture traffic either way. So in that week, they captured 845 and 705. So the total could be just 805, or it could be maybe higher than 805 if they were catching new, you know, different people going in different directions on the trail, for instance. And then the next week, the numbers were not as high, uh, but the, that week it was uh, 693, and 650. And again, that's two years ago. There's been two years of promotion, et cetera, of the trail. To my mind, even those numbers are pretty, pretty great, you know, for, you know, for the amount of foot traffic. And I'm thinking about what percentage of those folks can we capture, you know, and funnel off, even if it's like 20%, 10%, that's a significant number of people in the community. So I just threw that out there because I did have those, uh, those numbers. And then the other thing I'll just add as an addendum to what I already provided in the report is that I've been in conversation with Duncan about the next step because of the bond vote with the NBRC. Um, we've had some communication with the folks at NBRC national and at NBRC state level to get their sort of perspective on what the next step sh should be. And uh, we got some information, wasn't entirely clear. I'm gonna get some clarification from them, but I have a meeting later in the week with LCPC and LEDC. And for anyone listening that don't know the acronyms, it's Loyal County Planning Commission and the Loyal Economic Development Corporation. I have uh, meetings with both of those folks to get their perspective on how to proceed with things and to see if they can give some clarification on the perspective I was given from NBRC. Also, uh, Duncan had some questions about uh, Mumbly Engineering and their next steps and their readiness as it relates to NBRC. So I relayed those questions also to Mumbly. Mumbly then had their own questions, which I'm going to have to again sort out with this meeting at LEDC and then figure out how that interfaces with drawing down money because they they gave a synopsis of their readiness, but they just are being thankfully very cautious about how to proceed because they don't want to proceed with something and jeopardize reimbursement or funding because of the way that the grant works. So they're just waiting and, and uh, for us to kind of give them the guidance as to what to do next. But that's, that's oh, uh, and then I do have a unfortunate update with the historical society, which I did convey to them, or at least Mary Jean, Jean uh, already, which is one of the grants that we had had a conversation about was the Building Communities Grant. Uh, the Building Communities Grant, as I have now learned, is a much, it's a broad category of funding in Vermont state government. And if you go to their website, they list three areas on the Building Communities Grants website that that, that grant covers. So it's recreational facilities, economic development, 
and uh, cultural facilities or something like that. However, as it turns out, that broader umbrella actually funds two other grant programs that are not listed on its website. Those programs have their own website. And the reason that this is important is if you apply to one of those grants, you cannot you you can apply for another one, but you you cannot receive another one in the same fiscal year. So the historic preservation grant, which has its own page that's called historic preservation grant, which is the one that I made the historical society aware of, falls under this larger umbrella, but it is not noted anywhere on its website. It's noted in a PDF document that you have to download download from the website. Similarly, this doesn't pertain to this, but there's 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 a grant offered through the Vermont Arts Council that also has its same funding source. But again, if you go to that, if you go to that website, it doesn't make mention of all the other ones that would then essentially disqualify you from applying for those. So anyway, maybe it's, that's too much information, but it's just applying yeah. for the grant that I had flagged for them probably doesn't make sense. I mean, that was the recommendation of the person I talked to at the, at the state. The good news is uh, the way that it has worked with the Rail Trail Committee, the working relationship that we have is they send me things, I send them things, we have a conversation, I do whatever research or legwork that I can for them. And if and when it rises to the point that they are very serious about applying for the grant, or if it becomes a point where it's going to be a significant part of my time, that's when I come back to the select board and I check in and say, okay, there's this, this opportunity, you know, the day-to-day -day groundwork for it, I've been working on or whatever, but now it's going to require some actual time to commit to. And I, so that's the good part about the conversation with the historical society is that it, 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 pending your direction, that's what I would like to do with them is just send them opportunities, have them send me opportunities, do some legwork, do the research, get them lined up just the way that the rail trail committees lined up. You know, we applied for the welcome center grant for them. There was a piece that they wanted to do that's going to require permitting, but the good part is that's now in the pipeline and we can just keep working to get everything in the pipeline for these various organizations so that if it isn't this grant round, it could be the subsequent grant round, or if it isn't this grant, it can be another grant, et cetera. So anyway, hope I didn't convolute things for you. I'm comfortable with that approach. I, the rest of the board is all comfortable with that approach. Right yeah, now. I appreciate it. Yeah. I think there sure. is one item that we should either take action on or figure out what next steps we want to do. Um, it's in regard to the NBRC grant piece. So the, the piece that Randall is alluding to is whether or not to proceed immediately with the NEPA review, the Environmental National Environmental Program review for the industrial park or wait 30 days. Um, so part of the piece that I think Randall is looking for more clarification on from Mumley is what would be the impact of waiting 30 days to begin the NEPA review versus getting a head start on it now. The risk that we're at is um, uh, should we have a bond reconsideration uh, vote or petition submitted within that 30 days, it could jeopardize you know, the bottom lines. I think we would end up, if, if all else failed and the bond failed after reconsideration vote, we would be on the hook for the cost of the network deal. And that's the piece, I guess that's the risk management piece that I want to talk to you guys about. Do you want to take that risk uh, or wait 30 days? Mumling's kind of indicated that the 30 days could conceivably put a bit of a crimp in getting the work done in a timely fashion, uh, given whether or not those kinds of considerations. So I guess that's, in, uh, uh, as Randall said, he's going to get try to get more information on that. But I think if you guys are comfortable with the, even the notion of proceeding with some element of risk on the NEPA review, then I think we should authorize somebody, Randall, probably to pull the trigger on uh, the NBRC piece and authorize the, uh, the NEPA review. 
Oh, one thing about Mumley, I'll just flag there. They indicated that it in the email that I that I saw it, they indicated that if they're able to work on some of the permitting issues parallel to the NEPA review process, which I don't know with certainty, but I'm pretty sure they can. They thought that the 30 day piece wouldn't really impact things significantly if they're not able to do that and if they have to do a bunch of prep work sort of you know in definable phases rather than being able to do parallel work that's that's the only thing where it would just delay it some but again duncan had a specific inquiry about their readiness to apply for act 250 for instance and they said they were about a month away on that so that's you know that's roughly 30 days as well just for board information yeah the piece of work that Munley is working on in terms of submitting the Act 250 piece is not part of the grant expense. That, that's, we already have a contract for that work and it's paid for, or it's, the, the funds are committed to that already outside of the end of the it's, So I, I don't think that should really interfere with the, you know, the process of getting ready to submit for the activities. Continue on that as normal. Wait 30 days to the same. I say go ahead. Not wait 30 days. I don't have the NEPA cost in front of me, the other ballpark. Was it? Do you, was it ten thousand uh, dollars, Randall, for the NEPA review? <laughs> Somebody always has to not unmute themselves when they're speaking. Um, no, I think it was more than that. Uh, but again, that figure, uh, I can find it relatively quickly. It it's on that spreadsheet. spreadsheet. Yeah, but I was going to use the cost proposal that was actually um, reviewed by NBRC. Um, I have their May 1st cost proposal. Uh, if, if you look at the spreadsheet that uh, was put together for the funding stack. Yeah. It, the figure that's in that was prepared by Mumley or submitted by Mumley. So I think that should be a, a reasonably accurate figure. Well, this, this one is 15, six, um, but that's, that's what they have in their, their cost proposal. And then they have three different pieces that I think we've talked about and are in that spreadsheet that could go, um, could be involved, but just for the sake of, you know, somewhere between 10 and 20, I think is, is accurate. For that amount, I'm comfortable understanding there's a slight risk. Same with waiting. No, I'm comfortable with moving ahead, understanding, understanding there's a slight risk. So I, I, would, I, I, I agree, I would make a motion to authorize Randall to pull the plug on uh, starting a NEPA review. Just for clarity of the minutes, uh, it, it would be called a partial notice to proceed is what I would be requesting. Yeah. Partial, yeah. partial notice keep, to proceed. Pull the plug? Pull, pull the plug. P -P -P. Pull, the, pull the plug is not the official terminology of the federal government. It's partial notice to proceed is what they uh, use. I for because I thought it was the end of the project. Okay. Yeah. There's a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And all those opposed with an A. Nay. The ayes have it. Anything further, Randall? Uh, uh, nope. Uh, I was just going to ask more, yeah. as, as it relates to the um, ECRD, the Reimagine Johnson, uh, the I guess the work product there, these five points that were brought up um, and voted on by the folks who showed up for that, uh, are these 
all things that we are comfortable with Randall using his time to pursue grants and uh, you know other projects that fall under these this umbrella here. I think that's a longer conversation. I'm not opposed to it. Um, there is still another session on the reimagining Johnson event. And we still need to talk about it as a board once it's all closed. Yeah, one of the questions that I had, now, I don't know if you know the answer, Randall, but um, these five areas, um, A, are they going to be reduced to three? Um, and B, uh, are these likely to end up being independent study groups that report? Who are they going to report to? They're going to report back to the select board or VCRD or? Uh, so they won't be reduced. There was a there was a larger list of about fifteen uh, that were reduced down to this five. And at the end of that meeting, folks were able to sign up to participate in task for task forces devoted to this. Now, yes, the broader conversation for the select board to have is to decide how you see those task forces interfacing or not with town business in other communities sometimes those task forces have acted you know relatively independently uh, obviously they can't act independently if and when they reach a point where they're going to be impacting town business in some way or the other i mean you know so there's there's that question of those, I mean, they look like pretty much every one of those, you know, would fall at least to some degree and interface with things that I deal with. I mean, the grocery store is something that I've already been involved with, in, uh, you know, on a number of fronts. So that wouldn't really change anything. Um, but again, it's about what level of, you know, you know, I mean, that's your, obviously it's your decision to make whether how much, you know, creating like a formal relationship between me and these groups you want or don't want, or if you want to wait and see, you know, all of those things are questions for you to kind of evaluate. The one thing that was in my report, which this now reminds me is, you know, there is a sort of technical assistance program that has an application deadline of October 16th that interfaces with two of these, or potentially interfaces anyway, with two of these task forces. And just to reiterate from the report, this isn't a grant. There's no money coming to the town. What it is is, in a way, it's similar to VCRD. It's federal agency devoting its resources and, and expertise and involves hiring consultants through them. They do all of that. They organize meetings and they, those folks work to produce a kind of master plan for recreation and sort of revitalization of Main Street. And it just so happens, again, that two of those issues, at least one very directly and one very close to directly anyway, interfaces with that. So again, that would be a thing. I haven't looked extensively at the application. It looks, you know, it's the federal government, so it doesn't look simple, um, but it doesn't look like crazy either. So, you know, you might see that there could be value to it even outside of uh, those task forces i don't know that's you know something to think about i can kind of like take a deeper look at the application and not necessarily work on it and come back to you maybe at the next meeting and just see if you guys have thought about it more and decide that you do want me to apply or not apply you know um it's you know however you want to handle it obviously is fine by me randall would the epa program with would, would all the costs for those consultants be borne by the town no, there, there. That it's not supposed to have any cost. I, I did see them made mention of something about like, or I guess sort of similar to VCRD. There was a mention of like, if you want refreshments at the meetings or something that you know they don't cover those costs. But the, the expertise of the people and all that stuff. I mean, I'll, I'll get more clarity. Like I said, it was just a cursory look, um, and I did do the the webinar. Um, you know, it, it's. A, it looks pretty interesting to me, but again, you know, at a certain point, there's plan planning fatigue, so I get that as well. Do you have any sense of how competitive 
how competitive this program is? Uh, I think it's fairly competitive, but there are, I believe Pulteney got one uh, within the past couple of years. So I think Vermont has landed in these program, I mean, landed, has been successful in this program before. I mean, because it's specifically focused on rural communities. So obviously Vermont, you know, is going to fit right into that, that mission. My biggest question on moving ahead with this would be, are the, you've got three and four as being goals of the reimagined Johnson process. Are they, is there enough meat on those bones to, to move forward with a specific request for technical assistance? Well, Looks to me like at this point, you just got a sign up sheet. Yeah, except that the technical assistance is to do the planning work that those task forces might engage in and to provide like, again, expertise that you may not otherwise have access to. So you don't have to have for this, as I understand it, you don't have to have like a specific set of projects in mind, this is actually a process that would help you kind of like delve more deeply into those kind of aspirations. Um, so the, the good part about the VCRD process as we talked about when I applied for it is that now you have like a, you know, you have this legitimate process to point to and say like the community convened on this date, they, they were convened again on a second date, they identified these as priorities. So this technical assistance program you know, would be perfect for us because they identified as two key themes, the very themes that this technical assistance works with, you know, that whole thing. Like it, it provides a framework that you don't just say, hey, we really think we need it. It's like, we think we need it. We actually have had town discussions on the matter and we've had professional facilitation to discuss this. And, you know, it was narrowed down to these two themes that are a part of your, you know, your technical assistance mission. So I think it's actually, you know, a really good fit. My my um, concern is this October sixteenth deadline. I mean that seems like right around the corner. Um, if we if we put this off and you talk to us at the next meeting with more information, and we say this sounds good, which at first blush does to me, are you going to pull this off? In two weeks? you don't have faith in me. <laughs> don't, don't 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 forget you got permission or you granted permission to apply for the recreational facilities grant on behalf of the Moyle Valley Rail Trail and I believe I turned in the application the day after or maybe two days later um so the point being like I was trying to lay out before is what I try to do is build the you know amass the material and think about it and get it kind of positioned so that if I do get the go, then it's just sort of plugging it in. I mean, that's a large part of what I what I do as, as a matter of course is right. Like I look at these opportunities and and it also helps once you apply for one, you've already got the basic framework for the next one, you know, and you just sort of tailor it and you can kind of keep going with those. So I can't say with 100 percent certainty, but I I do think so. Yeah. Slap, Randall, <laughs> and you just slap me. So, um, the one, the one that I have a concern about, honestly, is number three: downtown reconfiguration and redevelopment. Is that for us to do that without being in some sort of communication with the village trustees? I mean, the village is is the downtown and. We honestly don't have a whole hell of a lot to do or say about downtown redevelopment and reconfiguration. So I'm 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 a little less comfortable about that one. You know, the recreation piece. I agree. Other than utility so with the doesn't the town planning and like form based code have authority over what development would be or like because what would the village do to stop? The town's process for redevelopment because they're just charge utilities, right? 
They, they are, but I mean, if you look at like the Main Street project, the Main Street project was a downtown redevelopment project that was under the purview of the village trustees. It wasn't under the purview of the town select board. Uh, you might have been able to argue that it could have been or should have been, yeah. but it, it wasn't. I don't know, my, my only concern is, I guess, if we're talking about, it seems to me that the trustees ought to at least be aware of the fact that something like this is being considered. Yeah. Well, the only thing I'll say to that is that, you know, the village and the village trustees were invited. And at least I know at the first meeting, I saw village trustees at the first meeting. I don't know if I saw trustees at the second meeting or not, but so they're looped in. And I would also just say that, you know, these are, uh, you know, the kind of aspirational task forces, you know, there's, so if people see this and they see downtown reconfiguration and redevelopment, it's not like there's been a group that's been empowered by either the trustees or the town to like actually take steps to make something happen. It's about exploring options, brainstorming ideas and aspirations, and then formulating that. And then if they do have a specific ask, they would go to whatever the appropriate agency or authority, you know, et cetera, and say, this is what we think would be a great idea, or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I just don't want to like anybody be scared. They see these things and they think that there's this specific action moving forward it's about the community members kind of coming together and saying we want to think about these things and articulate more about them would you like him to come back to us in october or form a motion right now i guess i wouldn't mind learning a little bit more about it between now and then but are you okay with doing some light work randall and coming back to us first week First meeting yeah, October. absolutely. And if anybody has any like, you know, specific question that they, you know, they want answered or need answered, if I can find the answer, I will get it. You know, you can just email me and let me know, but I'll, I'll, I'll give you, I'll put together a general kind of synopsis uh, with a little more detail for you. And then, but also if you have specific questions, just let me know. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Randall. So is, is the next item canceled? The Historic Society grant request. I did gather that, correct? Well, I would just chime in again to say if if the idea was to make a motion for a specific grant application, uh, I don't think that that makes sense. However, if you feel like you need a motion or if it's just about the expression of the consensus of the board, I think what I'm proposing is a similar relationship that I have to say the rail trail committee, which is keep going in conversation with them to identify funding opportunities, do kind of some of the initial legwork, like I said, so I can be positioned. Should you give me authority, you know, like, you know, basically. We already gave you that sentiment. Yep. Yep. So then, then, then I don't think that there is a specific need for the next item unless the historical society says otherwise. I think we're good. Before we move on, Kyle, did you have something you wanted to say? I just wanted to say that the next, my understanding for the next reimagined session is that they're going to bring those agencies and those experts back to uh, the meeting to help us um, create a roadmap and also um, pair it with funding sources and um, ways to, you know, to really, so it doesn't just sit on a shelf and collect dust, but it actually there's, there's momentum afterwards yet to bring it all together. So I would encourage the select board to be there to hear that and participate in that conversation because I think it's going to be a really important one for moving forward. It's sounding like we're going to end up with a process a lot like the community visit process of whatever it was, 2002 or three or whatever. Four. Four. Yeah, it's going to be very similar to that. They they actually mentioned it in their first gathering. So you had gone through this process. I think Dean West was orchestrating some of that, wasn't it? Well, and the Main Street project came out of that. Right? Am I crazy? Uh, not entirely. <laughs> One of the things that did come out of it was a revitalized Tuesday Night Live. 
Legion and Legion Field to hold. Yeah. So the communications committee that pulled all the volunteers together. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that all you have for Vandal Shane? Yeah. All right. Our next item is a discussion on form based code. A little bit of background <laughs> might be needed. Um, I believe Paul, you came to the town meeting and asked the select board about or ask the voters about potential revisions, right? Under additional Correct. items. Correct. And then the next day, the select board kind of asked the planning commission to make provisions uh, for flood mitigation projects. Planning commission denied to make uh, amendments to form-based code for, for good reasons. Yeah. Um, but I believe we're talking about a potential need for revisions. Nobody's correct me yet. Uh, for, flood, for flood mitigation projects. <laughs> Understanding there's a process. Um, I do think there is a need for certain facilities. I think select four degrees. Absolutely. Uh, would the select board like to undertake proposed amendments to the municipal plan or not, not the municipal plan? Form based code. Present them to the planning commission. Yeah, I can just clarify when I spoke at uh, town meeting, I was speaking as an individual, which I Figure out how they made clear at the time, so I apologize. Oh. I speak as, as an individual, but I was concerned that certain more sort of our fellow form based code would be able to make modifications and so forth. So I thought something we should at least consider, and that was just my comments. When you asked us to look at it, I did take it back to the planning commission. The planning commission had quite a long discussion about it and voted my idea down, it said no, we should not. Modify form based code to make exemptions for uh, flood mitigation purposes, specifically because it puts us right back in the same position again. To make it easier to rebuild in the same place, you know, we're back in the same hole of the now, and there may not be flood mitigation lying around and so on and so forth. During the last we met in Johnson meeting, there was a discussion about it, and it was a pretty overwhelming sentiment from the attendees. That this gross and store should not be in the same location, which is it's not those in service in the long term. Having said that, I'm not sure if you had option. Paul, can you? I, I didn't hear who who had the conversation about whether the grocery store should be in its current location or not. What what was that? Yes, uh, remand not to me. Okay. That was one of the questions that came up, you know, kind of on random lists. And they had to hold up red card, green card, yellow card, and stop go maybe kind of things. And it was overwhelming. No, it should not be in the same location. For whatever that's worth, just the people that were there that night. But when you just say it, there was nobody saying he's either build it there or you don't get You know, it was a choice. It was just should it be there. Yeah, I I wasn't able to attend that event because of child care. Um, I guess my question would have been if that is the only option, other options are cost prohibitive. Uh, and I'm just asking a broad question. We're, we're talking, but it's not directed towards you. Uh, if the option was there with flood mitigation or no grocery store because it was cost prohibitive to move it, do you think the people would be supportive of it going back there with flood mitigation efforts or just having a grocery store? Um, yeah, I guess the board hasn't really discussed it, but I'm taking a public call. Well, Can we make it slightly? The context of, the, of that um, exercise that we went through was about building resiliency in Johnson. So it was 
so that was the, if we the hadn't... premise of it. <laughs> yeah. And gotcha. we, did, we, the majority of the people that were there, did not feel like that would build long term resilience for Johnson to have the grocery store in the same spot. Just, just so you know, there was a little more nuance to that. Charles had his hand up first. I thought that was the, the whole thing. I thought it turned about the crux of uh, Farmalo receiving a grant to retrofit the building and no grant, no retrofitting. Uh, that's a private developer. Uh, I can't speak for them. Um, but are you saying if there was a source of money to go there, you would be supportive of it? Rather than no grocery store, that's great. Charlie? So getting back to the issue of why we amend one base program. Mm -hmm. It's not simple. We gave Randall uh, and he's given copies to you folks of the procedure for modifying the one base program. And it'll take a while. What are some of the problems with any modification of one base program is it has to conform to the town plan. We don't have a town plan. We would have to conform to river corridors and floodplain. We don't know what those regulations are. So, you know, attempting to modify, you have to go through the whole process. I mean, it's been suggested that there's a simpler way of doing it, that select board can do it. Yes and no, it depends on what part of the statute you read. But if you try that approach to modifying for those code, You'd have to have Australian ballot since the original form based code was passed by Australian ballot. So it's not simple <laughs> to just change form based code. Yeah, I don't I don't think anybody from the select board was saying it would be a 10 second deal. But, the, but you're the, saying there's a chance. <laughs> a chance <for> <laughs> I, I, it was a dumb and dumber reference. I should keep those out of the select board. <laughs> Years. It wasn't lost years. on me. Why can you expand on why you feel it would require an Australian ballot to make yeah. that change? Look at um, 24117 4385. I haven't got it in front of me. Well, I'm telling you, that's where it is. It says it was proposed. It says that if the, if the original form gauge code is passed by Australian ballot, the changes have to be passed by Australian ballot. Okay. It's right here in black and white. <clears throat> what if somebody put a petition together to Same get thing. rid of it? Um, I don't know. We need a grocery store in Johnson. And if that's the uh, only place that we can do it, and uh, he gets some kind of a grant to make it flood proof or pretty close to flood proof. It needs to go there. And if it takes getting rid of form based code to make that happen, I'd have no problem doing that. Neither would I. <laughs> Entirely different reason. Charles? It's not insurmountable to turn around and have that voted on by Australian ballot at the uh, at, uh, town hall. Certainly not unsurmountable. I think Charlie was just pointing out that there's a process. And uh, one thing that Paul has mentioned in the past was, uh, I don't know if the Planning Commission talked about this or if it was you individually, but floodplain mitigation. Um, you know, if there's a higher wall bill that takes up more volume of water, um, then where's that water going to go? And I've been a big proponent of not filling the floodplain in. Um, that being said, for a grocery store, um, maybe there is a way that the board could formally do it. Um, but when the project at Holmes Meadow is done, my calculations are it will remove roughly four times the cubic footage of the store in material. And if the town could allocate some of that reduction in a semi-formal way, maybe that would at least codify um, the fact that we recognize it is filling in the floodplain. We are trying to remove material somewhere else. Uh, it's all good ideas. Um, I think one thing that's pretty critical is the building's already here. Yeah. So the displacements are- Well, here. yes, but it's over water. 
if it can't fill with water up to seven feet, that's that's your crux, right? It, it was three feet before, and I was trying to think about it. Well, what would it be from three feet to seven feet? It'd be four feet. But the fact of the matter is, when it goes over three feet, it fills in. And, and is my, my thought. My response to that would be the town currently has an application or is sponsoring an application through the Swift Current. Who makes these names up? I don't know. <laughs> um, program. And if it gets, that's a FEMA program. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a branch of FEMA. If they conclude that building those flood mitigation measures to a 500 year flood elevation are consistent with FEMA rules and regulations, I have to believe that that's going to meet any and all requirements that we would be concerned with over flood plan. Because Vermont emergency management is going to be involved. FEMA is going to be involved. The floodplain management people are going to be involved. It was not a uh, federal or state government. It was uh, in recognition of local people that are watching the floodplain. That's it. I, I agree with Evans. For what it's worth, I agree with Evans' thought on that, that we are going to have a whole bunch of green space coming into our possession it would be very smart of us to or well you to uh you know look at that if if putting the grocery store back in the same spot is the only option to get a store back in town you know having it balanced against additional water benching would, would be helpful. yeah the other the other option is the store gets bought out and we have another green space <laughs> yeah certainly <laughs> I mean, as far as one plane, we can move our salt shed and sand pile, and there you go. We made it up. Um, we can kick this can down the road. The line. generalized question. The grant or not. I guess we get the grant, but we don't have to do it. I guess the generalized question for tonight: Does the board have an appetite to go about making modifications to floor base code for flood mitigation purposes? Yes. Yes. I'll abstain on this one. <laughs> <laughs> you waited for this one? <laughs> you could have resigned is, last time. Is, you every, did both. is everything that he is doing going to trigger form based code? Isn't that glazing? It's window glazing, right? So you, and you would assume so, but we don't know for sure could rent you. Yeah. I mean, How about this, Mark? The rumor is it's what five foot wall or six foot wall that would meet sixty percent of glazing. I I have the appetite for it. So there are three board members that have the appetite for it. So my my question would be it's it sounds like the planning commission is still not interested in pursuing any standards for flood mitigation for any property located within the flood zones? I was going to say the question posed to the commission is should we recommend to the select board to get this get the waiver process to be focused on? You tell us we want this done. Yes. So that's your question. Well, my, my question really was, if, if the Planning Commission is fundamentally opposed to it in concept, then I think that directs us in a different direction. If you think there's an opportunity that the Planning Commission would be willing to take this up and uh, work with LCPC or whoever to develop some specific standards for flood mitigation proposals, then I would... I would Personally, I'd like to see the planning commission work on it. But if you guys aren't interested, I don't want to waste the time. That's fair. It's a fair request. It's a different request than before. Charlie? Before you go ahead, in the future, read 441A, the proposed amendment prepared by the planning commission shall be submitted in writing along with supporting documents. Through the planning commission. You have to draft it all up with the supporting documents first. 
Yeah, it, and you guys can look at them and say, no, we don't think it's a good idea, and then we can proceed. So it's, I understand all of that. It's just, it doesn't, the fact that we su submit those to you doesn't require you to bless those. Right. It requires you to it look requires at it. requires you to prepare them. Right. Which, which is part of what I'm saying is, I understand there's a different process. You guys are interested and willing to take it up again, I would like to go down that path. If you're fundamentally opposed to the concept, we'll do the other. Now. Getting back to the store, I'll say it maybe a bit different than what I said before. We don't need to get all worked up about this until we know for sure that he's got the grant and wants to go forward. If he doesn't get the grant and doesn't want to go forward, then we fix the number up. What's that? Timeline? Do we know when you know? Supposedly December, right? I think it's the same deadline September 30th allocation, and then December 31st, they'll have to like kind of like the free application. Decision. I think it's part of that same. By the December. end of the year, I would say. But but here's here's the problem. Number one, I, uh, I don't think we should think about this just in terms of the store. True. <laughs> that place does have a broader. Yeah, because I think there are, are other properties that could need the same relief right. um, for flood mitigation within that area. So I think it's a mistake to talk about it just as the store. But to Charlie's point, this is not going to be a simple, easy, or short process. It's going to it's going to take a while, so I think to wait until we find out whether it gets the approval or not. If we wait, then that adds potentially another six or eight months to his timeline, and he's already kept the property. You know, he could have sold the property or or bailed on it or put a dollar general store. In. You know, I mean, there's any number of things he could have done already. When's the um, the last deadline for buyout? Fast. Fast. Yeah. So he can't necessarily. Still, he can still buy. Well, he could. He wouldn't be eligible for the 100% fees, right? I think they're calling it a rolling application. The priority given for August 16th. So I called about just other properties and the library being one of them. You know, what happens then, right? And so they said, yeah, keep applying. You hear of any residents still apply, and that's this program kind of rolls all year. And depending on the significance of the project, it can actually be moved ahead or behind. And something like this that's been on the governor's agenda since the day of the flood, it, I think, would be pushed pushed ahead. You know, for, you know, if Palmer Lou was going to use that money to put it to make it somewhere else, right? So, but, but I like, think, I believe for tonight, Paul. If you're willing to ask your board in a meeting, if the select board provides proposed amendments, if they're willing to accept looking at them, that's the answer that we need. Hi, right, Duncan. I thought you were asking this for that. I think no. we have to provide the language because of what Charlie said. Well, well no. We if the planning commission takes it on, they can give it to yeah. us. The yeah. planning commission. Uh, the planning commission. Charlie's point. point. Well, the planning commission has already said they're not going to prepare language basically for this. The, the select board or, any, or uh, a person or body other than the planning commission can submit in writing along with supporting documents to the planning commission a proposed amendment or uh, a group of people can petition uh, not less than 5% of the voters in the municipality can petition to give them language that language would then be unamendable by the planning commission and would have to just be passed along. Um, so Duncan, you were asking us to reconsider basically. Yes, I'd rather avoid so that the process you just talked about and have them submit something. That to was us. a reconsider request. Yeah. Um, Charlie. So we can reconsider, we can change form those code, but you've got other issues that are related. They are river corridors, that was in flux with that too. S213, that's all in who knows where for several years. So they come up with regulations of what can be done in the river. And so 
we change for this code, we have not accomplish anything in this particular case. I guess I'd look to hear maybe from LCPC as to whether that is. Yeah, right. All that stuff is coming, but it's also going to be starting to develop. So in the meantime, we may be able to do something. That, yeah. that would be my call. That. There is a lot of, it's going to get more complicated rather than this. Oh, yes. 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 But I, I think if we had something in place, it would be harder to argue that you couldn't do that. Um, I, as far as I know, there's no mechanism in place for undoing an ordinance that's already been adopted. Maybe they'll figure out how to do that. Yeah. Are you clear, Paul? On we're asking for renegotiation. Adrian. Um, so if he does get the grant and then he can move forward without a bunch of hurdles and things, uh, I wonder if we could put in form based code rather than building up the area, building out areas to hold water so we're not just sending water down the stream. So. Yeah. Potentially, yeah. I think I have one basic question. What is your basic question, Mark? If he doesn't get the grant, he's not going to do anything. We don't know. I, we don't I, know that. We don't, we know. don't it's, know. It's a private landowner. He can do what he wants to with it. And, you know, that was my thinking. I, I think we're attaching this forward. entire conversation to one grant. The state and federal governments have more than one, and uh, maybe a better one will come out tomorrow after we leave this meeting. And as Duncan alluded to, there are more than just one property that might that this might yeah. apply to. So it, talking about it as if it's only about that one property, I think is a mistake. But maybe a really wealthy person from Johnson lives on Woodward Road will just come down and <laughs> donate the money. <laughs> I mean, we're tying a lot of people are tying the conversation directly to the grant. We don't know if he gets it or not, what will happen, but there are potentially things that could happen separate. But to your point, the story is very important. You just think of the all of the travel that people have to do just to get groceries. Yeah, I mean, we try to be green in this state, and then we're spending all this money for gas and everything else to drive to points unknown just to feed ourselves. It's much better to have a store right in Johnson. Certainly. I have a lot of power. My point about farm based code is instead of like taking things away from it and making exceptions, why don't we make it easier to? Uh, build out infrastructure and hold water instead of. That's a flood control dam. Sounds like. Yeah, maybe I'm misunderstanding the question, but the current request is for the, the planning commission to reconsider. Given this conversation, are you on the planning commission? So, I, I mean, email me. I, I guess I'm not sure. I completely understand your request. Make it easier to store water. Well, I just mean like. What if they built something on their property to hold water? Sorry, yeah, I don't um, know. Now you're talking my language. <laughs> um, so I'd certainly consider some language. I, I think one of the hurdles is cost prohibitive measures, which, you know, maybe requiring oh. on site retention of the same volume of water. Would be cost prohibitive, but I I don't know I don't know exactly. <laughs> By about Adrian, fifty minutes. I think Adrian's point. She's trying to look at it a little more holistically. The problem is that form based code just regulate building on boats, and we're kind of rolling in. Mm -hmm. So you want like a more formalized zoning? Right. You want more, more formalized zoning? Is that? I didn't say that. Okay, I do. <clears throat> Um, maybe some sort of wording. I can't answer that tonight. We would need like a rights bill 
to do any kind of difference on the Lamar River to stop it to a flood control. Really. And where would we put that? Yeah, just on the river. On the river, just really? just this side of more. Well, I couldn't. Thank you for that observation. <laughs> well done. <laughs> <laughs> Where would we put that? On the river? <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to stay on the corner by my house. <laughs> Are we ready to move on to the next subject? Clear, concise. Thank you very much. Charles, you have the floor. I'm not trying to put the heat on you. But feel it. Heat got the air conditioning on. Yeah. Gosh. Wow. Well, that's the heat on him. We can't take it that the okay, heat yeah. is we're 50 minutes behind. Oh, yes. You better have a cheap proposal. There's no <laughs> money involved here. Just, oh, great. Just free. Just, just information. Uh, I want to know. That is the language I can speak. How many people in this room got their Fidian fiber yet? No. Not me. Although I got it. Although I got it. So just quickly, you already have the, the basic outline in the uh, in your packet. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the last two pages are for you to look at later on. It basically takes that outline and just kind of really flushes it out in a lot of information that's just way too much to go into, unless I want to do what we just did. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you're, not, you're not smart enough to ask those kind of questions. Um, I, you know, after talking to one or two of the select board. I'm not trying to talk down on anybody, but I figured I'd really be basic in some ways. Smart so um, this is a website. No, that's a car. Yeah, uh, just for all intents and purposes, this is a website. Okay, and so uh, we're just going to talk about point number one: front end and back end, and that doesn't mean this. Okay, front end of this car is the nice, pretty part you see online. You know, it's. A, looking beautiful and that's what that's what the outward face is that's what the user interface is and that's what everybody's going to see when they come to whatever website we end up employing for the town of johnson okay the back end what controls everything you're going to see the content and everything else that's like the transmission that's like the engine of the car that's like the chassis so that that's basically what a website is it's a front end coupled to a back end the next point i'm going to talk to because this is going to be pretty fast you can look at the rest of it later um talks about what is a designer and what is a developer the designer is the guy or woman or whoever is making that nice clay body you've seen all these all these beautiful ads or the guys sculpting the outside of the of the car that's the designer okay uh the developer he's the guy who is the engineer behind the scenes he's the one who's taking care of the transmission and the engine and everything else so you're not going to go up to the uh the guy who's made that nice clay model you're not going to go up to him and say how fast does that go what how many miles of the gallon what kind of torque does that engine have that designer is not going to know anything about that. So keep that in mind. It's the developer in the back of this who is going to be the person who makes all the moving parts go. And in a website, basically, if you go to Amazon, what you're seeing is a nice, pretty picture. But the developer is the one who makes all those buttons clickable. The developer is the one who makes all the search fields searchable. He's the guy who's connecting the ability to have these huge databases that you would have in a in an, an excel sheet and enables them to be populated on a product page so you go into amazon and you're like okay i want a a, a hose for the lawn he's the guy who's connecting everything so that when you click on i want to see green hoses he's got it so it's filtered comes up green all the hoses that's what a developer does. And you need both of those to put together a website. As so companies they get- They can't be the same person? Uh, only really in possibly one instance. And I'm going to go into that in a second as to basically the three basic types of websites that you've got out there. Okay, so that, and I, I will hit upon that fairly quickly. 
Any questions on those two basic points? So those basic points. I like the analogies. Everybody good with me using the car as an analogy? Okay, great, great, awesome. So uh, the next thing quickly we're just going to talk about is the three different types of websites that you've got out there. And, and one of the things, the reason I'm going over this is because the, the number of proposals that Tom got was pretty amazing. And the breadth of them was really large from like three grand to, to 20 grand. 60,000? I, <laughs> 60, I, I just quickly went down it right away. And, and in my head, there was a whole bunch that if you use criteria that you kind of read about in the back, that'll help you filter it out. This is designed to help you filter out the noise, and get to the crux of what you need. But anyway, so there are three websites, three types of websites, custom uh, websites built on platforms and websites built on industry platforms. What does that mean? Make believe this is Rivian. Make believe this is Tesla. That is a custom site. Sure, it's a car, but basically they redesigned everything from the ground up. So if somebody comes to you in these proposals and they're basically making it uh from whole cloth, that's a custom site. What's the benefits of a custom site? Um, and I'm just hitting upon the biggest points, the much more narrower points are in that handout. Uh, it's built from the ground up, okay? So you get exactly what you want. You've asked for all these bells and whistles and it's gonna be designed for you, okay? Another benefit is that you actually own that site, okay? It is yours you're not paying anybody else once you've once it's been developed okay um that would be the pros of it and we can look at a custom site right now open to the open to the first um uh the first page this is the back end which we talked about the front end we're talking about back ends and which is really important because it's really if you don't have the correct transmission, the correct engine or anything like that, doesn't matter how pretty the picture is in the front, it's not gonna work. Because our website is gonna have a lot of people using it, all these different committee members, not just, not just you, Evan, but other people are gonna go in there, populate the calendars, they're gonna go in there, they're gonna wanna post something just for their page. Because of this, uh, wait, let me a second. Oops, sorry. Uh, because of this, if you take a look at that page, that's a back end, okay? And that's a back end of a custom site. You can see it's fairly straightforward. It's pretty clean. Um, and it basically, you're telling the developer, I'd like the back end of this site to look in a very clean way. Um, and, that, and, and this is how a custom site back end could look. Um, that actually is one of my custom sites um, just for, and I'm not selling anything here because I'm not in this, not, I didn't submit an RFP, thank God. Um, but anyway, that's what a custom backend could look like. Let's move on to the next one because man, I know you guys don't want to be here forever. Um, the next thing would be is a website built on a platform. And that's sort of like WordPress. WordPress is a platform you can build a site on. Let's use the car again. Okay, you got this car. It's got no wheels, all right? It's got no transmission. It's got no engine. You basically got a chassis, okay? So um, WordPress would be something like, you're the, you're the guy who's creating the car and now, and you've got this basic empty car, you decide, okay, I need wheels. Well, it turns out there are three or four providers of wheels out there and you can choose from any one of them and you need an engine and you can go to different, different manufacturers of different engines and you can choose one of those. And the same thing with the transmission and the same thing with electronics. And so basically it's like a plug and play. Um, it's third, we call those third party apps basically, or, um, or pieces of software that connect into this basic car and you're creating a website for yourself out of a conglomeration of these different parts and that becomes 
your website. And when I mean like, let's step back, what does that mean? Uh, let's make believe tires are actually a shopping cart. So you go to Amazon, you, you, you check off the five things you want, you go to see your cart, there's a cart, okay? And it lists all your items there. That's sort of like, um, like this, you would choose, okay, I'm gonna choose this type of wheels. So the, the person who's creating this website for you, they're actually going out and they're choosing the shopping cart software to plug into uh, the, the WordPress chassis, so to speak. Um, you asked whether you always needed a developer or, and a designer. Well, WordPress and a couple of other platforms like them, actually that's in a way that you don't have to. Designers in this case actually who have no who have knowledge of this can actually take different third party softwares and plug it in. They're not coders. Real developers are real coders. They are there building it. All these lines of code going by that is custom. This is not. So it's kind of if something breaks and if you read in deeper, you'll see that it can with um, there's security vulnerabilities because you have as say Microsoft gets their security a little bit higher. All of these third party apps, the wheels, the, the engine, everything in it, they all have to be upgraded as well. And Does they, and the, they charge can they charge for that? Um, I am not a WordPress expert, but uh, I don't think the charges would be excessive, at least from my experience. Yeah, um, I with, with WordPress is essentially you have a curated library of plugins is what they're called. But exactly. The software that, that you then plug into the chassis of the website, it's a curated library. So as long as you're paying for your WordPress whatever subscription fees you have to pay for that, that curated library of plugins would be included in that. What I think Charles is saying is that sometimes those plugins kind of go out of date yeah. uh, for one reason or another. And that's where having a good developer, or in this case, a designer, a someone designer. who knows what the good plugins are that are gonna be updated over time and puts those into the website as opposed to some of the less secure or less you know, less updated ones. Um, Good explanation. That that was great. That was great. Take a look at uh, the second handout after custom. Okay. Once again, these are back ends, and you're going to have a lot of people going into these back ends to do what they need to do. So the first one is a WordPress back end. This is a dashboard. This is where you would sign in. Uh, Duncan might sign in, somebody part of the beautification co uh, committee is going to sign in. So this is a WordPress uh, dashboard. It's a little bit more complicated. A lot of times the learning curve can be a little higher, especially for people that are not used to um, dealing with the back end of software or, or going in that. No, it's hard for me to explain it. Take a look at the next page. So That's uh, not as user friendly. It's not saying they can't, but for the neophyte, for somebody who's really not into, yes, Mark, I know I'm talking to you. Uh, <laughs> that's why I brought the car. Uh, the, that's exactly right. The next page is also another platform, general platform, just like this, like we said about plugging everything in. That is Joomla. It's another uh, platform just like WordPress. All right. And let's uh, go to the last thing here. Uh, so why I forgot to tell you about um, the, the pros and cons of that. Uh, for WordPress, designer and developer are one in the same. It saves you money because the chassis is already here. Um, and uh, you also own the site. Although, just as uh, Shane said, every time an upgrade comes, it, it you're, you're your car, your site is being slightly changed and all the little plugins have to also come up in security. And the you might log in one day and the tires aren't there anymore. Exactly, <laughs> that's, that's possible, that's possible. Um, the cons on this is that it's not for a specific industry. Okay, originally WordPress was for content, so just information page. Um, it's less customizable, uh, you can pay to 
extra to have things customized, but it's still overall less customizable than a custom site. And we talked about security vulnerabilities. So that's one of the other downsides. The last thing we're gonna talk about right now is websites on specific industry platforms. Let's go back to the car, okay? You got one company that makes cars. You got another company that makes construction equipment, okay? Uh, you got another company that makes race cars. Yeah, they all drive. They probably all have, you know, plates on the back of their vehicles, but they are specific for specific industries. Um, so uh, the interesting thing about that, let's see here, is, well, first off, go to the back end, the last, the last image there of that, of that page, that handout, okay? All right, that one is uh, an industry specific site. The names have been removed because this is just informational. Um, but that is specifically for uh, a town. That, that is a, a custom, this company makes made a custom uh, website in which they are running it. It's running on their <laughs> servers, okay? And um, this is the back end that everybody who would be in any of the towns that they take care of, this is the back end that they're looking at. And as you can see, it's, it's made for the person who has, knows nothing about computers when they log into the back. Um, one thing I would say about that, let me take a quick look at this. So it's when you say they're running on their servers, do you mean the designer developers servers or the companies? Well, this would be, so you have specific companies out there, larger ones than maybe the smallest design and developer companies that are running a, 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 a basic website their website, they're running it on their own computer systems or they've contracted out for it to be someplace else. The nice thing about that, I know we're going fast, but you guys had a lot to talk about. The nice thing about that is, is that if something happens to the site, okay, malware, one of the people that's got access to say a committee member accidentally opens up a, 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 a bad email, they're fished and uh, it follows them into your website. The nice thing about having it with a company though, is that if the site goes down, it's one phone call. You turn around, these guys gotta, it's their job to make, to make everything right, okay? And if not, it could you know, possibly go through their server. I don't know what could happen, but the nice thing is, is that's, that you have somebody to turn to. Um, with custom sites, uh, I mean, I have custom sites, so I would turn around to my developer. Um, but if the developer's not available, my developer's not available, I'm, I'm SOL. Um, so, the, and, and the same thing would be the same for a WordPress site. You're going to rely primarily on the, the designer to do that. Um, the industry platform, it gives you a lot of bells and whistles. Um, once again, if the site goes down, they take care of the security of that. They also take care of, like I said, they'll also, they also take care of the backups. That's not necessarily true with any of the uh, custom sites. And that's, not and that's not necessarily true with um, WordPress. Although if you, some of the big hosts like Shane knows about, like Bluehost, they're doing all their own backups. You would have to reach out to them, but they are a giant organization. So I don't know what the response is out of that. Um, the bad thing about these, uh, about th these sites, okay? One is uh, the, the site for the industry. You don't own your site, not really. I mean, it's running on their servers. It's basically, they've given you several templates to choose from. They'll somewhat customize those templates as in the outside, the front end, they'll, cu they'll customize it somewhat for you. Um, but you really don't own that site. It, there's higher costs for those bells and whistles. And because it's running on their servers and you really don't own that site, there's ongoing subscription costs. So each of these things, whether it's a custom site, whether it's a site built on WordPress or Joomla or, or Wix or another one of the general platforms, or it's a site that's built for a specific industry, they all have their pros and they all have their cons about it. Um, 
so you know what he got in his package is huge i mean there's a lot of considerations in there for you to think about um any questions yeah. <laughs> do you have a favorite i haven't looked at them all i mean uh i recommended one but i have not been able to see them all i would say one thing uh in my mind um you need a track record okay what? a track record a track record as in somebody's built sites for towns before uh that would be my first filter right have, there have you looked at other town sites too? yeah there's, I mean, everybody's using stuff from custom to okay. they're they're using one of these three. I, I understand that, but I was just wondering if there was a particular site. So, oh gosh, Mark, I, I you know, I, I, I've had so much time to look at the hundreds of thousands of, of town sites out there. What's the best one out there? <laughs> <laughs> Can I strangle you? Uh, the biggest player in the field, though, is uh, account, a, a, a company called uh, I think it's Civic Plus. They wouldn't even look at us. I mean, their minimum town size is 15,000 uh, people. Uh, as far as industry, I only was able to find a couple and, and ones that didn't hit, hit all the bells and whistles because we are a small town. We're too small. I mean, we don't have the gigantic budget. The big, big guys, they are actually taking all of your records and making them findable they're connecting everything i i really kind of hope that you will read the detailed one in the back that we can't go into because there's a lot more information in there that would click a lot of questions that, you know, mm -hmm. i can answer for you at some point certainly can you forward all of our people to that i put them in the packet yeah, that's why your pack is 300 pages. Right. <laughs> you didn't see that pack. I, I did, but it, you have you to wade through that. It's, it's, right. it's, a, it's a lot. I, I, I was uh, going through it and I was pulling out pencils to stand in my eyes. I, yeah. I mean, it, 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 if you <laughs> want to pay me to wade through that for yeah, you, I'll sure. do it. They, they were, I didn't want to have real sharp. I, just, I was just working a well, pretty good. But yeah. The deal is that that one is. It's got like 20 Vermont towns on it for about $3,000 for me. That seemed like a pretty good deal. Well, I I would say that the devil is in the details. Yeah. Um, just you can't look at it go, oh, yeah, 20 Vermont towns. That's awesome. We're going to go with that. that but they, they look good. Uh, you know, the, the format, look, what I would call is a uh, desirable format. All I would say is that hyundai and some chinese cars look pretty sharp almost as sharp as some bmws there's a big difference under the hood and that's why you really have to delve into the details i understand that but it, it, this is not rocket science is it? uh it's computer, it's computer science, it's computer, <laughs> computer science. <laughs> i understand that but these have already been developed all these towns have it uh <laughs> so you know why do we need to spend twenty thousand dollars for a website i, I haven't three grand and have something have way decent i don't think charles is necessarily yeah, saying i understand we need that, to spend any amount of so. money i think i think what charles is saying is that picking the right person to develop the website is going to take time and attention and unless we go with a platform and then we need to pick the right person to design it right and, and even then it's going to take and and in those proposals, just as someone who does work on websites for my day job, there's a lot of fluff in a lot of them. Oh boy! And and if if you're <laughs> someone you. with experience reading, you know, doing web work and stuff like that, you can you can identify some of it as fluff. I'm happy to go through some of them with people and, and point out some of the fluff I see. But uh, knowing when people are putting in unnecessary fluff uh, to make their proposal look better. So what do you uh, think of that three thousand dollars site? I, I will be honest and say I also have not gotten through all fifteen of or eleven, 11 of the proposals. The the three hundred page packet I did not read through it all. Well, I'm very disappointed. Why bore you? I, <laughs> why haven't you all gone through it? Hang on. 
<laughs> We're on a different subject. Thank you for the presentation. You are, you are more than welcome. I will take my car and go. Thank you. I believe the action item as far as the website RFP. I I believe the action item and the best way to handle this is to delegate a couple of board members to come back to the recommendation of the board. Or somebody that's and in, or, or, in full or disclosure to be next uh, board, board member. Yeah. Yeah. You know, why don't you read? <laughs> why don't you get your pencils out? <laughs> and you go through 333 pages, and, and then you make your determination. I am happy to provide a recommendation on my way out the door. Right. And Would in you... full disclosure, there were two late submissions, and one declined to give a price. I think that our recommendation should be based on the eight that were submitted on time. Is that, 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 that already that already trimmed sixty pages. The was three thousand dollars on top. You know the packet. I put in the verify. XP and the other really long one. You know what? The hundred granders were late. Charles, would you be willing to work with Shane to uh, structure a recommendation. a recommendation to the board? So the, can I join that to uh, yes, 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 two municipal redesigns? And I think one of the things that's most critical is working with Rosemary, specifically Rosemary, um, because everything that they're going to do, Rosemary and her staff needs to know day in and day out and so her hard questions need to see how well they work together and that's like the most critical piece is like how that payment portal which is the most used item on well the and then the hang on that. the payment portal is used heavily for town for village oh 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 the other portion of the recommendation is could you inform the village because they were asking for prices and we are not selecting any late tonight, but you could. It's, a, it's already public data, but yeah, you know, they, they, they we're, we're looking. Right. We're looking in the three thousand to twenty thousand dollar range ish. Yeah. I mean, I went through and I saw three that weren't that seemed reasonable with, you know, without reading so, through all the extra stuff. So the, the village that. thinks they can rebuild their website for like four hundred bucks. So we <laughs> might want to get their opinion on how to redo ours. <laughs> they don't handle that's. Yeah. So is there clear direction? Tom? Can can you hear me? I know I'm remote, but um I'm your current webmaster. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi, I'm Elisa Clancy. I took over um the website when your webmaster died and um I didn't design it, but I've been keeping it going. Um and uh I have built websites for the town of Hyde Park and um, the town of Belvedere and always tried um, to do um, the best work possible at the least amount of cost. Um, and recently the town of Hyde Park, we went through a redesign. They went with, I think one of the companies that you have their proposal from, um, their name was Revise. Um, and the thing that you should look at in that proposal is that the expense continues every year. Um, it goes up every year. The, the design and the, and the development of a website is mostly done at the beginning. 98% of the heavy lifting is done when you make the switch and you create what you want that's what you should be paying for. I personally don't think that these custom sites um, should be charging you the same amount they did the first year, the next year, and the next year. They're just making money like hand over fist. We've always tried to keep things uh, reasonable. You'll see if you look at how much you've paid so far, the town of Johnson. I'm, I, I didn't put in a proposal, just so you know. Um, Joanne Ring, who's in the room with you, did put in a proposal. Uh, she She's there to answer any questions about uh, WordPress and, and the kind of site that we recommend. 
Uh, you, you're a small town. You don't need these Cadillac websites. Town of Hyde Park went with it. I think they're going, it, it's nice, but it's really, really basic. They're going to regret how much money they're spending on it. That's my personal opinion. Um, I don't think that your needs can't be met with a WordPress site because um, it's not that complicated. What you're asking is for agendas and meetings and minutes and searching PDFs. And it's all very doable at a very reasonable cost. And I would recommend not spending too much money on it. And Joanne's been sitting there all night. You might want to talk to her. I'm all for not Thank spending you. much money. <laughs> And I'm all for minimal ongoing upgrade costs. That really is a concern of mine. I and see. we need to stick as local as we possibly can. Well, I want to go for I'm not qualified to make the, make the choice. I, can I make a motion that we appoint Tom, Shane, and Charles as a committee to we're not, we're not forming board. another committee. Well, <laughs> it, 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 it's just it's about, it's just a consensus. We won't call it to, to provide a recommendation. To, yes. to come back and provide a recommendation. To the board. There's a motion on the floor. I'll second if we have to do it, but board consensus would have been fine. Well, there's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I don't know anything about WordPress. Okay. Is there any? I, I know our current yeah. website is on WordPress. Yeah. I mean, yes. But I can All right. All those in favor signify by oh, saying aye. Is there anything know, that right. you would like to add to the conversation before we vote? No, just if you have any other questions, um, if you want any other information, I'm just here to support the proposal that I put in and answer any questions you may have. Thank you. The fact that you showed up is the only one. <laughs> And you had to wait a long time just to see. That's not that far drive. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying nay. And the ayes have it. Congratulations, Shane. What did you say your name was again? My name is Joanne. Joanne okay. Ray. And so what's the name of the company you have? Davis Home Designs. Okay. Thank you. It was in there. Yes, I understand. Wait, well, but I was just trying to figure out. I couldn't. I missed her name. I, and I know it was in there. Yeah. I figured you memorized the cost. I was. I was going to go for hundred and twenty grand. I got. I got shot down way before. You're one of the reasonable. Ones. I think you might have been the most reasonable. Ones. And the as well as the web designer and the developer and the thought of targeting people for things they don't need doesn't work for me. I like the way you said. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Okay, come again. I'm sorry if I'd have known we could have pushed it up. I wasn't sure. You could have told me to speed it up. Uh, our next item is an engineering RFQ. We had asked Tom uh, last Monday to prepare one and have it in front of the board for us. What are the board's thoughts on the uh, RFQ that's presented? There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Further discussion? I have one. Could you throw a date in there where the XXXXX is, or at least? I would love to put this out. Uh, if I can get it on to the bid registry tomorrow morning, I can say we had it out, you know, like three weeks, right? Mm -hmm. So if I can get that out and then we can get bids back on the 7th, we might hopefully we can make a decision on the 7th so then we can move forward with our project. So you want the. Uh... Can I make that date? I'm going to make that date tomorrow. If you say okay, I'm going to get it out the door tomorrow morning. Is that yes? Yes, motion to second or have accepted. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I was hoping it was going to put it out with an but all of those opposed signify with a nay, and the ayes have it.
Uh, I believe our next item pertains to what you were potentially talking about adding, Duncan. Um, but it's the old business display format. Yes. So I think I sent out an email to all the board members this morning. Um, I, I, the first part of the conversation is I, ideally I would like to see at least for our work session meetings an agenda item which would be a header, old business, and then list under that old business actual items that are the business. Um, the thought process would be that uh, it would be a good kind of rolling priority list for the board. Um, and, you know, be action items for, you know, for you and Randall as well. Um, and that as we completed an item, it would come off the list. And as we added a new item, it would go on the list. And, and it just, it's just a way to focus our attention between meetings so that things don't drop off the radar completely and we actually follow through on some of the things. So that would be my, my specific proposal to do that. Adding to our work session agendas. Right. Kind of so adding on to that, it's funny, you know, you pulled in um, the things from Hyde Park and I, I actually had them ready, but they were from February. It was at the same exact spreadsheet. But if you look through that paperclip packet, I put how I've been keeping track of old business, how Beth kept track of old business, how Brian did it, how Duncan did it, and then a new idea for a spreadsheet, and then how Hyde Park does it. I just kind of wanted to get your idea. I don't really care how it's done, but I think one thing that I'd love to see is a way to track it, but more importantly, is I'd love to have a um, start date with an end date and then a point person. And it doesn't matter who, if it's Tom, Randall, or a board member, but just having everything run through that point. So if it's, you know, say it has to do with the industrial park and Duncan's a point person, you know, every you email, hey, Duncan, can you check in on this? Or have you heard about this? Rather than having 10 board members go out mm -hmm. to talk to different people, it's like, let's, let's put in a, let's assign a point person, whoever that is, and then all questions flow through that. Or, you know, if it has to do with, Something with the rail trail, maybe it's Randall. It's a hey, Randall, you know, what do they need for support? And that way we can have the priority listed, a point person, a start date, and a hopefully end date. And this spreadsheet actually will track days once you create it. It'll tell you how long it's been standing out there. So then we can even look at it and be like, geez, it's been three months. Let's prioritize that and finish it. But I, I think we really need to focus on having a point person so we don't have multiple people reaching out to the same state agency or multiple people reaching out to LCPC, but just running running all information through whoever the board delegates for that matter. And I don't think it matters. So this one would, was kind of your thought process of how we might do it, or is that somebody else's? That is why I met with LCPC last week and asked them for help on this as in, in preparation. And so this was something that kind of came out of that. That is, this was actually Melissa's idea. She's like, oh, there's like this thing called a workflow chart. I'll send you a draft. And then I took it and then made it match. You know, made it match what I thought the needs were. And then in the back was what Hyde Park does, right? Or Hyde Park did under under Ron. And, and I don't really, and really what I wanted to know is like, might not be one, all of it. Might not be one of them. It might be here, but just which ideas do you like, and then you can incorporate it. Right? It doesn't matter. How do you want to do it? We don't just solve that today either. It's just, I yeah. think, I think the point is, I point is that we need direction and clarity, and just like let's here's a bunch of ideas. Let's take them and make something work for us. However it works. Right? I want a point person. Duncan wants consistent reminders, and I think if we can, we can do both of those, and I'm sure you guys are going to have what your needs are too. Right? I think it'll be, I think we can really clean things up quickly by doing this. The public disappeared. I, I, I really like, I, I was going to take it as, as a two step process. The first step being to actually list the items on our agenda, on our physical agenda. Um, but I really like what Hyde Park did. And, you know, just taking a quick look at this. It's very similar. There, yeah, Ron's is way more detailed, which I think that could turn into 
But I think if we could get a starting point yeah. to then build off of, yeah. Well, the other piece that Ron had, and I, I think this is a good idea, he's got the grants list. He's going to help me do that here because I, I'm, they're building up too fast and I can't keep track. And, and I have like 30 folders, right? Heaven forbid you get run over by a bus tomorrow. Um, yeah. 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 Right there, bro. Or a beer I, yeah. I think uh, this might be a stone chore consulting like hey Tom, like give me one hour on a computer and have it and bang it out. Like, yeah, and, and you know, Randall would need to be part of that too because there's some things that he's doing. I already have an email out to Seth asking for what grants do we have with LCPC and just like just try and pull them all together yeah. somehow. And and we're gonna be surprised when we see the list. Yeah, oh, God. <laughs> impressed, I would like to say. Impressed, yes. <laughs> But I think this is a really good idea. Um, it, 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 I think it's really effective for Tom and Randall as administrators to you know, sort of have a running total, if you will, of everything that's going on. It would be really useful for us to, you know, to keep track of it. I mean, you guys know that. This is super there. detailed. It I is, like it. It is detailed. Um, and it's probably more detailed than we need as a board, but I think. My suspicion is for, for somebody like Tom, it's going to be yeah. very useful. Yeah. Well, Which what I'm mean? hoping to get out of like one day, I'm going to come and say, "Hey, it's not going to be FEMA, so it's going to cost money, and he's going to have an hourly rate." I think it's going to be peanuts in the end. But if in two hours or one hour, we get a blank spreadsheet, every single new grant, right? The old <laughs> grant is going to take a ton of time, but every time there's a new grant that comes in front. You're, you're just filling out it exactly. exactly but really what i need to i'm hoping to ask to actually you know what can i have permission to pay ron to help me set this up once and that way we we can just plug it in and then forever we have it yeah i think it's a very good use of time but i agree with Duncan. Yeah. like my parts yeah i mean it's definitely the best you know you can kind of see how we've done it over time it kind of expanded 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 i think we're at the point where it's so complicated I mean, I know I need help. So this is one way to do it. Yeah. I, I mean, they're really good track of tool. Their list of old business is really detailed, too. They have stuff going back to 2013. Yeah. <laughs> there really stuff don't take I mean, I, I guess I'm, I'm not trying to call that out as negative. But we have plenty of yeah, we're not business our items. Lines. Well, more <laughs> will come up. Um, but Hopefully your you can take some off of this. Well, okay. I mean, your Excel way. spread, your Excel spreadsheet is not so different than theirs. No, similar. Let's move on to help. I would like to call it a sign. Can well, no, this is. So it's an agenda item. It's I know. planning. We, we um, already discussed it. We're already asking. Well, We're well, what are the board's thoughts? We need to provide clarity. Tom is asking the question, what does the board want? We haven't said what we want. He's asking for specific well, the high power 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 hours and and yeah. Oh, format. authority for a couple of hours? I think this well, is all within our specifically to pay uh, Stone Shore to help get it set up the same right. way that well, I think he needs to go ahead and do I, it. I'm in support of that. And Take the temperature of the board. We all good with that? Yes. All right. That's below our procurement policy. So we're not doing it. Most. Is, but if you got, got the temperature. It, it would be an interesting invoice if I didn't tell you. Right. Yep. So. <laughs> all right. Further, I, I guess that was for grants, but do you want the old list priority? I mean, we could just. Take Tom I think, I think Tom can, you, you can develop that, can't you? Based well, on already it. So yeah. 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 You it is. The There's a couple of like slight wording adjustments. Yeah. Could, could we yeah. work together on that? Yeah. And there's the more to it. It's just didn't, I don't want to turn on another page. Yeah. 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 So, work session meetings, we will get this and we will get five minutes to say. Man, that list is really long. Yeah, and <laughs> actually, an actual listing on the agenda itself, old business for the, for the running. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Do you? I'll just put that into my template. What's that? I'll put yeah, your work template. session template. Yeah, that should be there. Yeah, and then do you guys go online to look at documents? Because if I made this spreadsheet on the Outlook OneNote, 
It means that you guys can all access it at all times and I don't have to print it out. You'll see my changes over time too. Or if you want me just to like do it on my computer. Do you guys want to get involved in the process or not? No. Okay, I prefer it that way too. <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind. I don't mind seeing it. I don't mind seeing it. And if it's an agenda item, it will focus our attention that agenda item 10 is look at old business. And, and that will, to me, that's the, the focus point. We need to look at the list and say, uh, geez, we got to move on this one. Let's, you know, let's get this one down there. This one can be taken off or, mm -hmm. you know. Most of, the top, most of the top boards I've been on has a parking lot, which is like old business. And it's the last thing on the agenda. Last thing on the agenda. You know, is to just peruse it and say, Maybe it's time for us to make get this on an action yeah. item. Okay, so that's that's your envision to the last thing, to, so last thing yep. on the agenda. Old so business. How I do this now is so I would just have all these items here as old business. This is just for you to know what I'm working on, but I won't put that on. Just you know, it's the select board's old business. Yeah. yeah. Cool. But it'd be nice for dates. You know, you have a spot for dates in your column. And, yeah, well, I, and I really column. want a point person. So that way, like when we leave the meeting, say Duncan has a question and marks the point person, rather than going to me or going to the agency that's supporting the grant, like go right to Mark and Mark's like the point yeah. person. Yep. You know, like when you sign new grants, anything <laughs> with the state or government, they need a contact name. And whoever that contact is should be the point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, um, Ron Sheeds assigned to and like yeah. well a perfect example where you you were the point for the interlocal and then you came back to the board and that was so smooth for the assessor or having Randall as the point for the NBRC and he talked to the state and NBRC and the, and like that's everyone just goes to Randall and then comes back like it, it worked really smooth that way and I think if we can just do that with everything else tighten it right up and take less work off everyone else that's the goal. <laughs> Yep. Are we good for, are we clear and concise? Okay. All right. Next topic is health insurance. Um, this came up last year and, and last year's previous board had said, you know, it's too late, but we'll get it early next year. So <laughs> my thought process, if the board so chooses, is to ask Tom to work with Eric if the village so chooses to come up with a couple of health insurance options. Um, I personally don't want the employee benefit to go away, but I think there's a couple other things that could happen that get the employee the same benefit or potentially save the town a little bit of money. Well, of course, now they still have the Cadillac plan, don't they? It's not, it's the, we yes. pay at the Blue Cross Blue Shield Bowl. Right, but we right. could go with the bronze and then have a whatever the difference is between the premium, put that in the fund and pay the difference. And an HSA or, or an HRA. I, I didn't even want to get into the weeds tonight. If the board's comfortable with Tom working on it, great. If they want Tom and a board member to work with a trustee member and Eric, great. Or do we want to just plow ahead and get to November and say, oh crap, we're doing the same thing. No, I talked to I, Eric this morning. No. Well, he was just to get a temperature of the room, and he just I think the concern is I, I think doing it right now is great. We haven't got numbers yet for this year, but I don't think that matters. We can still get a good idea from last year. Um, but I think the piece is that our union contracts are come up next year. So I think if we did it now, it's with the understanding that it might not happen until a year from January. So when we have a new union contract, we'll negotiate those in the spring. So that way everybody's rolling into this new health insurance together, union employees and non-union employees. Well, uh, or does it not matter? To it you would depend. That? I mean, the union contract that we have with our employees, correct me if I'm wrong, but it references the fact that there's an acknowledgement that increase in health insurance costs are unknown and we may need to go back and and discuss health insurance benefits at some point. Yeah, I, mean, um, I guess is and, the village union contract different in that regard? Though? I think it's a considerably different contract. Uh, even if it 
was providing the same service and saving money next year, I'm in support of options being looked at. Right. Yeah. I don't see why we couldn't do it this year, I guess. Yeah. I'll put together three different options and sometimes it's actually better for the employee, you know, the self funding deal with paying the uh, full pays. Yeah. But also better for them, better for us. Yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of models and I had a really long conversation with VLCT last year. And then we did a bunch of changes, you know, back in 2018 when I was teaching. And things have even changed since then. And last year I was speaking with Jill, I can't remember her last name. Muir? Jill Muir. She so retired, hard. but um, she retired this last, last winter. There, there's a lot of different things are different now, right? Like health insurance was kind of a given for municipalities. There was lower wages, better benefits, and we're starting to see a shift of municipal employees making more competitive, but lesser benefits. And these models are now tested out by other towns. I mean, wholeheartedly, I wish the LCT would self insure on the health insurance side. Let's take a bigger chance for them. But um, is the temperature of the board that we'd like some options put in front of us before budgeting season? Do you need a motion for that? And the board's comfortable with Tom working with Eric coming back with options. Write it on that spreadsheet and put due date 11 1. You have a notepad right in front of you. <laughs> so you're good. You got it. Would you like to borrow this? I got my own. Okay. All right. I think we have to. Next item is. Kennel options. Can, can I just make a generic comment about the insurance stuff? Yeah. Tom sort of alluded to it a little bit in his report, and that was whether or not we should consider separating the personnel policy because that is sort of a fundamental part of, of those benefits. Um, I'm not saying that we should or we shouldn't, but I wonder if it's just something that we should. Put on our own thing as well. So thinking about whether to separate the town and village personnel policy. Seems to me that the village has already made some changes to the personnel policy, which we didn't adopt, such as holidays. The right. There was um, another one as well. There was another one as well. I don't know. So, hey, you may I think it was the addition of a harassment policy. Could be. Yeah. I agree we should look at the separation. You know, I have to it would always be better to have two separate policies of the exact same language, I think, than having them be the same. I think just from the nature of our units, like you can still make joint decisions and change two word of the exact same policies, but then it's a handshake and not a marriage. I think get out of that handshake a lot easier than a marriage. We're in that marriage right now. And so we may hesitate to make a decision on health insurance because it's going to cause us to change policy. You know what I'm saying? I think moving forward, clean boundaries make, you know, good fences make good neighbors, right? This is an example. Okay. Thank you. Added to the old business list. Uh, item number 16, Tom, would you like to talk about that one for a little bit? Yes, yeah, so I met with um, Hyde Park last week on Wednesday, I believe. Um, just kind of went over that interval pool that came over uh, maybe a month ago, but, and there was a lot of questions, and it became very clear that that interval local was written from the perspective of Hyde Park working with the with the kennel and not Hyde Park working with us. And so um, once it came out, it became clear that Hyde Park's concern is that they are on the hook for anything, any dogs that Johnson leaves there and doesn't deal with. And I think what we're going to work on is rewrite the inner local so that it's clear that it's Hyde Park and Johnson. It's clear all the other towns that are part of it. Funding is transparent for all towns that are involved. And there's the part that it was missing that I felt it needed was the procedures to so say, kennel tried for 72 hours to reach Johnson ACOs and, you know, say five attempts, no contact, at which point that's the point where Hyde Park maintains control. 
control. It's not at their discretion, but there's like a procedure Hyde Park has to follow to then assume control of the dog that Johnson's responsible for, right? Otherwise, Johnson's on the hook for it. Who's going to pay the bill? Johnson leaves. So, you know, I, I understand their concern, but I think if we have agreed upon procedures for which point they assume control, then that we're agreeing that it's on us if we don't do it, right? Are there yeah. other potential potential participants? Yeah, right now there's a lot actually. Um, right now, I think Morrisville, but there's three confirmed right now. Um, we would be the fourth. Waterbury, uh, there's dogs from Franklin there right now. They're not part of the inner local, but they're the Waterbury Franklin's on my Canada. So, like, there is such a need that I, they can't get too big. There's only 10 kennels. They don't want to go more than five towns. Um, and so, this is like a window where there are a lot of towns that are very interested because of the lack of services available. Um, and so I'm also reached out to Crystal Earl, who's our ACO. She used to house dogs for us. And I'm talking with her tomorrow about if she's interested in being a subcontractor. For, but I think if we, if we go that route, we would probably need like a five-year lease, some secure, to give up a secure position in Hyde Park, or the kennel Morrisville with Hyde Park probably have a secure position locally if we're going to go that route too so just going to talk about details of hey it's the same deal right you know like you're a subcontractor you're not the aco so <coughs> we're helping her build the price for, for her own residence so that was the uh, insurance must be an interesting thing for okay. yeah and i one that's that's the biggest part is that she, I, she needs to be aware that it's her insurance you know, and that's what that annual fee is going to be, is to cover her cost of doing business, right? And then the dollar, and then the rate per day. This so she so, understands the full ramification, right? So coming out of this, would you like board member to work with on this agreement, or or just let me do it? But I feel like we needed. There's a lot change, and I thought we yeah. bring it up to speed. Yeah. Any board member? Okay with him representing. Yeah, sure. I, I, nice me, uh, I mean, yeah. I mean uh, the the template for draft intermunicipal agreements is heavily already there with the assessor. Exactly. With us in Hyde Park, understanding it needs to be for services instead of, I guess, the assessors for services too. The assessor uh, was for services there, too. There's a lot of things that need to be adjusted, but. Templates you know, already heavily there. Exactly. And Hyde Park really wants to work with us. And I, I think the success of the meeting is that I brought up our concerns, actually brought concerns to their their life that they're on code for too. And I think, you know, they're opening it was a new thing, right? And I think this we're gonna get a really good product out of this Do you think the thing with Crystal has legs? I don't know. Um, just texted with her. 5 30 tonight. I think you know, I tried calling a couple times and then uh, called again before the meeting. This session that we're in, we're going to talk tomorrow. So maybe she could even serve. I mean, one of my one of my concerns originally was Hyde Park was reserving the right to reject an animal from Johnson. And if we have five people, five towns, that's part of uh, doing that. And and there's 10 units available, it's possible. That's what I, I asked is this first come for a serve. And you know, they were kind of back and forth. And I said, look, if we're paying you five thousand dollars a year, there's an expected service. So there's a risk. And they're like, well, you have to have one. I'm like, yeah, we do, but what's the penalty for not having a kennel? It, you know, the, the law says you have to have one, but there's no there's also no recourse if you don't. Right. So it's like Johnson just gets a slap on the wrist. So here we're paying a lot of money to follow the law. And like we, if we're going to pay that money, we need to be able to follow the law. That is a practical matter. But for now, the patrol officer has not found a dog. There's got to be some place for him to go. Yep. Uh, and if, if Hyde Park is saying no, we don't have room. We don't want our money back. You know, that was part of the conversation. It's like, say we brought in more towns, right? Like, just throw it out there, right? Say there's like, instead of five towns, two kennels, what if we had 10 towns, one kennel? Johnson hasn't sent a dog over a calendar year, right? So, 
from from us. It's got from share, but not from us. And so, and that one new year, there's a risk, right? So Jews will ask for ten pounds, risk not having a space, but then you're only paying twenty five hundred versus five thousand. You know, it's, there's, there's some interesting conversations to be had there. Do you funnel um, get bigger and have a risk of having a dog turned away or, or not? One of the reasons we haven't sent dogs is the animal control officers having issued tickets and family animals. There, there certainly was a time when it seemed like every other week there was a dog at the at the camp. Oh wow! Yeah. You know, I, I mean, historically we we were pretty active. Uh, you know, Dick LeMay was the animal control officer. There was dogs were picked up and submitted and you know turned over the kennel on a pretty regular basis. And you know, honestly, I, I'm not saying I'd like to see that happen again, but but there was a reason Dick was picking dogs up and and found it. You know, they were either you know running loose or they were unlicensed. Or there was always good, you know, the opposite legitimate reasons was yeah. picking them up and sending. You didn't them. want a dog to have an ear to go because you have to get fifty bucks to do the dog. Yeah. And that served as, a, as an incentive for people. Well, yeah, your, that. your dog didn't hardly get down the street to get this stuff. Here's a dog. All right. I believe you have the board pushes to work on that, Tom. Next item, record. I would just request that if you if you end up with a draft before our next meeting, if you could shoot it out to all of us. I, I would say send it out like to the full board. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I think part of it is going to be a conceptual development of that and then drafting language on the paper. Okay, next item, rec coordinator job description. What are the board's thoughts? Tom's asking for a uh, delegation of a couple of board members, previous coordinator to work with them on fine tuning the job description. I don't think it's a bad job description that we have in front of us. Very tough to make a new person. Do we want to make any changes? What are the board's thoughts on that? I mean, I, as the person who, uh, you know, worked to get it to where it is right now, I think as it stands with the position funded the way it is currently. This is a good job description for the board to adopt right now. Um, if there is the thought of potentially budgeting for more hours in the future, I would definitely revisit this and think about what more could be put into this job description. Uh, but as the job stands right now at the 24 hours a week position, I think this is it's a good job description for that. Casey, how do you feel? Uh, I feel it's lovely. Uh, and I, I, I feel that one of the best things about it is uh, a connection with Shane and ability to work with him on you know, the whole thing. Uh, this is a treat. Uh, but use of personal vehicle pops out at the, uh, you know, it's, all, it's assumed that somebody has a vehicle and will use it. And that's always been something that that first person in that position has has done. It's almost like a requirement. So I, I just bounce that back to you guys to say, what do you think? Do we think we should require them to have a vehicle well, in the job it, description? There is a reimbursement method. For it, it. It's just not mentioned at all. Vehicle isn't mentioned at all. And that's what popped out. And, these days, you can't assume that somebody moves in the vehicle. Does it, uh, they might be does it describe that they have to move from site to site? <clears throat> you, you don't want surprises. Well, I remember that we did have one recreation coordinator that was less than excited about the use of their personal vehicle. I, I believe there was a request to detail it at the end, but, right. but I don't think there was any uh, reimbursement request for the 
mile to do that. Right. Yeah, but I, I would, to Casey's point, it would be reasonable to include in here that um, mileage will be reimbursed at the normal federal rate and uh, use of personal vehicle. I mean, it, they, they have to carry equipment and, and items. Yeah. I, that I think that's kind of the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Even as much so as any possible reimbursement. That's just a quick addition. When most of the vehicle mileage under we'll compensation yeah. Yeah. and working conditions, use yeah. of personal vehicle. Yeah. Uh, do you put anything about <clears throat> vehicle must be insured or? You have to. The town actually yeah, has a policy on personal like, work use of a personal vehicle. I don't know where that policy is, whether it still exists. But we used to have a policy that yeah. the person would actually sign a form saying that they were carrying insurance and was properly registered and they were properly yeah. licensed. Our town insurance will not cover their right. their yeah. liability. Their exactly. liability or their injury in the event of them getting injured while driving. And that, or even worse was... them injuring somebody else driving for the town and back it up. I think that's why there was an acknowledgement of having insurance. That was that in that, all of that information was in that form. I don't know if it still exists somewhere. Oh, <laughs> That'd be part of this. Uh, yeah, reference yeah. that policy. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> yeah. Are those the only amendments the board wants? To the actual job description? Yeah. Fine by me. I was just wondering, I mean, in here it, it, it uh, makes a sort of general reference to working with a recreation committee. And, you know, to me, that's. Planning with Recreation Committee and State Park Committee. Um, right now, we don't have a. Do we want that to be a priority to try and reestablish a rec committee, or do we want to go with Tom's idea earlier of just not having a rec committee and having him, you know, work with it? I, I think there's value to a rec committee. But I fully understand and appreciate that it might not be the easiest thing in the world to be convenient. It might come with a new director or a new coordinator. There might be like new fire under recreation. And then that committee might come to life again. It might not be worth throwing it all away. Yeah, it might be that we look at a different, I mean, there, I know some towns, I think Shane, you might imagine that some towns make use of volunteers like. I might be into basketball, but I don't care about soccer. Right. Um, so I might be sort of a, a committee member, but really with a focus on basketball. Right. You want to go during basketball season. And yeah. Start planning. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, the committee, the committee may not be the kind of committee we have been have been busy in the past. It might be a loose conglomeration of people that have volunteers specific you know, interest. Yeah. Oh, well, that's kind of cool. And so the rec coordinator would like have a meeting before summer for archery, skate park camp, and all the you know all the things at gymnastics. And then those that's the, the committee is those people, but then it's the soccer people in the fall. And might be a different group of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, you know, I don't know how that would all work, but I think it might be easier to attract people who have a specific interest. Yeah. Um, in you know, providing guidance or whatever, but so that it'll be their kid loves archery. Ex exactly. I mean, that exactly. wouldn't even be a committee. It would be volunteers. And right. just a, yeah. Let's committee. put the job description in the business too. Uh, well, so <laughs> fair enough. Uh, for now, I would like to leave that language in there. That answers your specific mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking for myself here. Uh, 10 years down the road with the volunteer fatigue we're seeing, I could see the rec committee and a boatload of other town committees not wanting to exist anymore 
and needing a 40 hour a week employee to manage parks and rec. So I'll make a motion to approve the job description with the changes that we have Sorry. discussed today. And are you clear on those changes? Uh, add mileage at the federal rate of compensation and benefits, add use of personal car with valid insurance and current registration to working conditions and physical demand, and make sure at the signing of the offer letter there is the personnel policy, the offer letter, and a either the car use policy or we need to quickly adopt a personal use policy if we can't find it. Okay. Motion by Duncan, seconded by Mike. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? And the ayes have it. Does Hyde Park have a record? They don't. Neither does Cambridge. It's done by three families. It's not amazing, place. right? We replace 40 grand with nothing. What if we had an interlocal? <laughs> well, that's where I was. What? <laughs> I mean, obviously, I could see that in an interim time, but I, I'm serious. 10 years down the road, I agree with everything going on and, you know, elderly folk asking for their own portion of wreck. <laughs> I'll be getting the, 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 <laughs> the legislature <laughs> the as well. Wrong, 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 wrong. The legislature as well is pursuing, I don't know how far they're going to get with it, but some kind of reforms to allow more county level government. And this is one area that I think would be very helpful for that. But I bet a school ought to take over the wreck anyway. Well, Thank goodness. You, you go tell the school board that. Right now we're, re yeah, okay. Um, our next item is reappraisals. Um, there is a recommendation in the packet. <clears throat> we'll go with Nim. We'll go with Nim. Where's your printout that you did? So oh, if you go on, what's that? It, oh, I think it's loose in the it's loose in the back. But today I wrote an email and I I, I saw the Justin on the phone and I had him compile all the numbers so they were side by side and then I quoted him what he wrote in his previous email so it's all together and that's pretty much saying his recommendation plus the numbers that you were looking yeah for. well that's a fox in the chicken group he works for that company where's the number he works for us and he still works for that company yeah, where did you stop for he doesn't work for them anymore he, he never used did. to work for them no no i thought he did no, Robin worked for Nemrick, Robin, right? Robin and right. then Robin, Nemrick declined to redo, so Terry came on, and Terry had an idea of being a municipal. Right. I, didn't know it was a I stand corrected. I don't, I don't see the numbers all, all compiled. Here. I saw oh, it's, it's loose. loose. It's loose in the... It's, it's loose. And that back of okay. your packet, there's a right um, this, this one here is the okay. I think you yep. added it to our final packet today. Yeah, yeah. When I was reviewing the packet, I didn't really admit the numbers were in it, but it was like hidden. So, I put them all together. so mm -hmm. do, do you know, Tom, it, it's got Nemrick $150,000 or 6250 per month for 24 months? Would, do you know whether that 6250 for 24 months would begin when they began the I believe that's in 2020 yeah, I believe it's a two-year process for the re reappraisal. Okay. And I the reason why he wants to go with Nemec Nemric is because um San Susi won't visit every every parcel. Nemric is gonna visit every single parcel in town. Uh and since we don't mm -hmm. have zoning. Mm -hmm. I, I thought Buckley know. was not going to visit every town and San Susi was utilities only. San Susi is utilities only. Okay, that's what it was. Sorry. Thank you. Um, San Susi was utilities only. Memrick was visiting every parcel in town and Buckley uh, would not give a price. And it was yeah. an interesting conversation. So we're give or take 
thirty thousand dollars short in our reappraisal reserve fund, but if we don't have to pay by twenty twenty nine, it probably won't be. Certainly, certainly not. not. I think we would be looking not really shy by that. No, Nemrick's number 150 sounds high, but PBR has said for years to budget $100 per parcel, and we have 1,348 parcels, so they're only off by $15,000. So it, it, they're only it's not it's not anything more than PBR has been suggesting for the last five years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So so it's yeah, like, they're they're proposing um, you know what five years out. Yeah, and so there's no on. other company that we can find that can do this quicker. Nobody wants to do it. And by way of information, I did talk with Justin today um, about the potential of contracting San Susi for a utilities only reappraisal um, because they can do that earlier than Nemrick will. And Nemrick will not be doing the utility reappraisal. And I'm trying to make sure I don't misspeak. Then, we have to accept the evaluation that the state does for utilities. Yeah. Right? Every utility is a state. Utility. Yeah. A, a utilities only reappraisal is really more of a audit and recommendation. We would still have to go back to the state and right. fight the appraisal of the utilities to even have those increase. I was I was going to say that exact same thing. It, to me. They're a New Hampshire company. Maybe they do things differently in New Hampshire, but in Vermont, if you're a utility, every utility has to submit a detailed inventory um, with cost depreciation, et cetera, with a, a full evaluation. The listers can appeal that. Um, in, in If you did a separate appraisal, you could use that as the basis for an appeal, but mm -hmm. the listers can do that anyway. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Mike and I were talking about this the other day. And so do, do all the utilities pay taxes? And then it didn't, did the, does the village pay taxes to the yes. town too? Yes. Only, 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 out, only for the assets outside of the village. Got it. It, this says scope of services list though, it's showing. <laughs> It doesn't show all your utilities. That's what we were talking about. It's like, oh, I, I just, it, I wondered if there was like an agreement that I just didn't know about. Yeah, yeah. No, state statute. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Rosemary, but I'm pretty sure state statute allows a municipal tax exemption for a municipal utility within their okay. municipality. Ah. So I think in Johnson's case, that has been deemed. The village of Johnson is tax exempt within the village of Johnson, but any assets that they own in the town of Johnson are taxable, and right. they do pay tax on. So we utilities. we agree. Is a town we agreed to that? What's that? Is a town we agreed to that? That's municipal. That's Vermont state statute. Rosemary told me today that that the school and the town tax is about twenty thousand dollars. But anyway, this list is lacking Morseville Water and Light, Hyde Park, and Village of Johnson in the town. Agreed, but um, I guess my point was doesn't matter. I, I, state I don't want to pay twenty thousand dollars to have somebody assess them when the state says this is what they're. You know, you're gonna have to fight. You're gonna have to fight their appraisal. Yeah, and they're, I don't, they're, I don't they're, see a massive gain. Do we need a formal motion to go with Nemrick or a temperature of the board and have them send I think us a I think Justin's looking for a formal acceptance and then so he can get a contract signed and get on the schedule. He's worried about it. There's 251 towns that got a reappraisal notice. In the I last moved three to years. accept the Nemrick proposal as yeah. one by Justin. Can you give a little bit more detail for Donna? Uh, I moved to accept the Nemrick proposal for townwide reappraisal at a cost of $150,000 beginning 2029. Second. So if somebody shows up next week, because they can do it two years from now. We'll There's a motion now. on the floor in a second. Is that the further discussion? <laughs> That's a further discussion. Any further, further discussion? So it will be done in 2031. Apparently, it takes two years. No, that's unbelievable. Uh, 
It took two years the last time we went through the patient. And that's what yeah, but parcels. Maybe you'll have to follow. So uh, we're under further discussion. My understanding was they would do the site visits at 28 and do the grand list. Not. Okay. It would commit. It would complete. Complete. Be completed. But, okay. uh, maybe you could follow up. Just send an email to the to the board or anybody who wants it, just for clarity on that. Yeah. I guess my motion doesn't have to include the date. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. I, I think we're good. And I assume that basically you're saying we're going to go with the NIMRIC proposal. He's going to get a contract from that, and it's going to include all this. that's right here. Yeah, that's a given. All Inspect those in, every property, blah, blah, blah. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All of those opposed? Okay. And the ayes have it. I think after I get off the board, I'm going to for $6,250 a month, I'll start appraising properties. Yeah, it's like a four year process. That's a good deal. You have to become a certified. A appraiser to, to do it, but yeah, it'd be a damn good business to be in. So, in four then, years, you're going to be like six. Just, like yeah. <laughs> just like going to uh, pull off. So board meeting. We're nearing the end. Uh, there is an additional item about Grove Cemetery. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tom. Um, so, we received some communication in regards to uh, Grove Cemetery has been closed. So it means no new burials, but there was an outstanding verbal agreement that Leona Whitehill could be buried there. Duncan remembers this from his time, is that correct? And I do, and, and that would be your but, uh, as yes. well. I, mean, I talked with Eric Osgood and yes, they it's, maintain that, they mowed that cemetery for decades. And I think we just, before anything comes up, let's get a formal agreement. And at the same time, we'll do the boundary line agreement and just put that cemetery to bed. Is the is the board okay with Tom doing formal agreement in front of us to sign? Has that value been totally squared away by all family members? Uh, I have to meet with Leona, not Gary. Actually, Leona's the owner. I'm not sure how to do that. But I, I the White Hills know that we're going to talk on it. And right now, there's just some things being moved around. And then the when you I say think, things being moved around, like. I'm not going to elaborate on that. <laughs> and then there's, uh, and then I have to meet with Roger as well, <laughs> who, um, who owns the other two sides. So, and just, but I think the day that we do it, it'd be nice to meet with everybody because one of those corners includes the town, the Bidwells, and the White Hills. And rather than meet multiple times, we should just all meet at the same time. Exactly. And I want everybody in that family happy. Yeah, absolutely. Look, we should have pizza that's and they can all order. Yeah, all right, all, all kidding aside, I do believe that, that a boundary line agreement is on your plate for all our right. business. <coughs> if there's any question about that, let us know. It does seem like the consensus of the board is provide us with something to sign that codifies. What are they going to do? Uh, can we have, can you just use the template for Evergreen Ledge to? Uh, Oh, like like a deed for a cemetery? Oh, oh, brilliant. I, no, definitely. Well, yeah. while we're talking cemeteries, and I learned more about cemeteries in this job than I ever thought yeah, I would. I don't know. Um, this was an agreement by an old board, and I totally support uh, following through on it. But there was rumor made it from one person to another that there's a similar agreement with Dave Marvin and Plot Cemetery. Because he took care of it for so long. Is that true? But we get that in writing as well, just so that a future board doesn't have these questions. And who's the Dave and Lucy or just Dave? Because their son is buried there, right? Jim is buried. Jim is buried, yeah. He was the last one buried there. He it, it was Jim. Jim. What, what about didn't didn't David have a son of that right? that's buried there too? Oh, you've been out cleaning the gravestones, Duncan. Yeah, I, I definitely know where that Marvin stone is. I thought it was well. Anyway, good point. Could Same you time. get another one together? You know the name of the people. Do you guys David want it for Lucy both Marvin. Dave and whoever, or just Dave? David and Lucy. Lucy. Good. All right, and that would be a good thing. 
Yeah. I just think yeah. about next year's board yeah. members and no, going, absolutely. make it clean. Well, I think a cool part of this needs to be we need to lot it out. Like, and maybe they don't even want to be buried there. I don't know. That's right. We should put markers in the ground so that it's like clear 10 years exactly where this is happening. Well, at least with plot, there's a list of people that are buried here. Right. I mean, with, with okay. Carl, aren't they going to have to go up and probe to find an empty spot? I don't know. Well, um, Leona's husband is buried here. He must have died 30 years ago. Um, so his, in, and I think there's a son that's buried there too. Um, so his marker is there. I don't know if Leona's planning on, I mean, if, if she's being cremated, you could be right on the same plot as the husband. I thought about that actually. I mean, our, I that much room. with Evergreen Ledge, I think we allow one burial and two cremations. Yeah, three right. cremations. Two cremations. So, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm sure, I, I'm pretty sure there is a spot. Um, but when you, when you say we allow that, isn't there like a cemetery board separate from? No, that's for that's <laughs> more. That is for Lamoille View, which is not a town cemetery. Uh, okay. State law says in the absence of a cemetery commission, the select board assumes all the responsibility. Oh, gosh, bless. Forestville has one for their sacrifice. All right. So um sorry to add more homework to your plate. That's one to get. He's not sorry. Find out if she wants to make sure we have the Okay, so the last added item that we had before executive session was scheduling a meeting. Um, I believe Sheen has provided a resident who's resigning tomorrow, um, yeah. which means that we need to get a posting out. Don't we have to accept his resignation? Or yeah, what if you don't accept oh. it? <laughs> so yeah, if he resigns tonight. Here it comes. Yeah, never wrote wrote I can't leave now. <laughs> he never wrote a letter. I was, was going to say October 1st. Even though he didn't work here. <clears throat> well, if we don't we accept his resignation, right? we don't accept his resignation. I don't know what we gain by really kicking this one down the road. We don't get too much. Um, you gain me for another 15 days until I geographically can't make it to the meeting. Yes. Well, and, and I, you know, to some degree, that might be appropriate because you've agreed to work with. with oh, it'll be done by October 1st. <laughs> oh. yeah. that'll, that'll be done by October 1st. Uh, yeah. but. but you could do that as a volunteer. Yeah. yeah. So would, would you like me to read his resignation letter and then accept it? You yeah. have one? I think we've all seen it. It's dated for tomorrow. Oh. Or right, he's resigning. I would move to accept with regret and thanks um, the resignation letter of Shane Spence from the board effective tomorrow. Second. Motion or second. Any further discussion? I think we should, should send him a card to. No, so like board members don't get cards. Someone said something about cake. I, I want the cake. <laughs> you probably want to eat it too. Well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for all your hard work. Thank you. Thank you, yes, thank you Shane. Thank you, Lord. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. If you've aye. Given all those if opposed, you got to read it more time. I have a cake here. Don't you accept it. Mean you accept it. Just it's, just right. Right. it's a public yeah. document. Would you like me to read it now? You can read it if you want. Okay. No, you don't need to read it. All right. Wonderful. Yeah, all right. So we need right. to. So now that we've accepted resignation for tomorrow we need to post for the vacancy tomorrow who should handle it i i think lydia could handle it but yeah just a simple thing we got a lot yeah. of stuff on everybody's plate yeah, just a letter of submit a, in, in, submit a letter we're going to post in on the town web page uh, uh, port, uh, facebook page front porch forum and those in citizen yeah, but what about Twitter? <laughs> yeah. Get right on that. I don't have a tweet. Right on that. I don't have a Twitter. Right on <laughs> I don't have a Twitter yeah. um, Rosemary, I see you're both writing notes. I, the board's comfortable with all four, right? Yeah. And like Facebook and Front Porch Forum could be hit multiple times. Facebook's probably going to stay up there because we don't post very much. Yeah, so we're going to post for it. won't be until next week. 
Do one do past Lydia won't be in until next week. No, the news and citizens. Oh, yeah. The really, yeah. Past if you could you oh, change the day of the resignation to October? The deadline's not Tuesday. And then Heather already asked me to so, get creative with the date. Might check it. Might well, be Tuesday. Deal. I mean, you have 30 days from yeah. the date of resignation. So if you did it, so, it 30 days? I thought it was. So we need, to, we need to pick a date to have letters of intent sent to us by. And we need to pick a date for another meeting so we can interview candidates and it doesn't get in the way of our other 50 topics. Like Is this meeting. like a 10 day window that people have to, that, uh -huh. that we have to fill a position? What was it you were telling me earlier? The statute uh, says, it says we, have to, we have to post it for 10 days, but we shall fill the position forthwith. Uh, you could do that at first meeting of the month. And the statute doesn't actually say anything about posting. Well, the LCT, LCT was recommended. recommending posting for 10 days. So if you were to post it tomorrow, you could just take it up at the first meeting of October. Yes. Yeah, but if if we have more than one candidate and we want to ask questions and we want to <coughs> invite the community in to meet the candidates and they can ask their own questions, we're, the select board's going to a point, but, you know, Community members might that has to be an open forum. It doesn't have to be, but it doesn't I, think have to. I think we're being overly conscious of people's and their do we do exactly do we do that should be like a final decision. The question is what day are we gonna <laughs> do the meeting? The first <laughs> meeting of the month. That's what you want to do. Yes. Okay. Quicker the better. I don't I don't agree with you. I agree. I think you don't have to agree with me. No, I don't. Right, you just want, take a, would you like a special really meeting? What's the temperature of the board? You want a special meeting? I think I, we need one so we can ask questions and appoint somebody. If we ask questions and appoint somebody in one of our regular select board meetings, they're going to need to get out of the crowd, come sit over here, go through a meeting without having an email set up. And have a special meeting. Then. I think we should have a time by which they submit a letter of interest and then have a separate meeting to actually interview candidates. That's right. Mm -hmm. Maybe I didn't do a good job explaining myself, but I totally agree. I wanted to pick a date by the time we needed submission and pick a date for a special meeting. So it's the 16th right now and they're, and they're recommending 10 days. Uh, you have to post within 10 days and then fulfilled forthwith so soon but as long as we put it online and everywhere within 10 days do we can do it on the 7th if you wanted to make that a light of you know have interviews start at 6 p.m and then the meeting start at 7 or something i don't know how many candidates how about can... if we have the letters of interest due by october 1st with a special meeting date of the 7th to Review it isn't the seventh our regular meeting. Oh, the seventh is our regular meeting. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. Why, why don't you have them like Thursday before the meeting or something? But then the board could be then the board wouldn't have to come to a special, you'd already be here, you know, just come a half hour early or something, make a light meeting. Okay. That's not possible. so. Let's assume we're going to have a lot of interest, yeah, like okay. four candidates. It could be like speed dating. They got two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I look to you for dating advice. <laughs> I would. He doesn't have a very good track record. Right? <laughs> so he's, he's having difficulty. <laughs> okay. So, so Evan, walk me through how you see this. We one. need to pick two dates. Let's pick the first one. Is the board amendable to having letters of letters of intent? Letters of interest sent to us, sent to Tom or Rosemary, who wants it. I see any volunteers. What, what are we doing? Nobody's jumped. Down. Letters of interest for the select board. Oh, position. who collects them? Yeah. Oh, I think it should probably be me. All right. So is the board commendable? I like working with you guys. Letters of interest need to be submitted by October 1st to Tom. That's the first date we need to pick. That's fine. All right, the 27th. Time is going to shuffle through, huh? lose it here. 10 days would be 27th of September. Yeah, but he threw out October 1st. Send them to my junk mail. Yeah. yeah. Right in the spam folder. All right, so Tom, whoever is communicating with Lydia about the posting, that, that is the deadline. 
4 p.m. Yeah. whenever the office closes. 4 p.m. Yeah. October, October 1st. 1st. Letters of interest need to come in. You could say write a one pager or whatever. When you, but... when you say letters, email is acceptable. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's an electronic message. Even a tweet. It's an electronic letter. I no, think. it's an electronic name. So, and just for clarity, we're doing Facebook, front porch forum, website, News and Citizen. Yes. Yeah. And Truth Social. What's that? Oh, okay. Um, thank you. Next thing we need to do is select a meeting to appoint a candidate. When do we want to do it? Walk me through this. We're going to interview people. We're going to go into executive session and appoint one of them. Or yeah. we're going to interview people and just say, why? no, 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 yes. Why would we go into executive session? I don't know. So we can have we do the interviews. All interviews are usually done in executive session. Well, that they should be done in executive session. Uh, if we have them, I guess, but if community members have questions, like, I don't know. Why is it a community member? It's the board that's going to appoint. It, it should be an executive session, just like any kind of hire that we have. We don't bring a uh, new perspective town administrator before everybody in town. That's true, but they're not elected. This, yeah. this is typ typically an elected. And I'm just trying they, to, I'm not disagreeing with Mark, I'm just trying to figure yeah, it out. will be. I don't think I've ever seen an appointment that was done in the open. I mean, I every I committee board. member ever. We always want to yeah. the, the board's under no obligation to listen to whatever members of the public have to say in that moment. But I think what I've been saying is that you know, given the position, it would it would be a good one to listen to that makes their input. I'm not saying we have to. If the board doesn't want to do it. So, it, so are you saying that if, if uh, three or four people come in, twenty people from the town come in, are they going to be able to ask them questions too, or or is just the board's going to ask them questions? Are they going to be interviewed by the board or everybody in the town? I. You're making it hard, that. Well, it's the truth. <laughs> you, you're making it hard. Kind of good idea to have the public. I'd be able to ask the the public might ask a question that you guys wouldn't think of. Yeah, but I, I don't want to be here for three hours today. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Sure. We could do a half an hour session open that to is, the public. That's all I was picturing. I don't think there's gonna be fifty people from the public asking questions. Yeah. Okay. If I were a candidate, I'd bring in a lot of questions that are allies of mine. That sure. would, that would say God, Mark, I love how you do this. Will you keep doing that? This was your candidate's form. Yeah. For that deal. That, so, I really, anyways, I really got the short end of the stick when I did a candidate's form. But, anyways, um, that's just, there's a lots of reasons that it's so interesting. If the board's amendable to a half hour for the public, great. If they're not, I will just shut up and move on. Right, and are you Since when have you ever shut up? Yeah. I, since we're an hour and 10 minutes behind. Is this our last thing? No, it's not. <laughs> no. And you, last thing I'm all. looking for a yes or no. You're a no, you're a, for the, for the half give me a half hour, hour for the public. I'm gonna say no. Okay, that's fine. Nope. All right, perfect, we're not doing it. And we're doing interviews in executive session. Yeah. I'm gonna say yes. Okay, so October 1st, 4 p.m. We need letters of interest. What date are we doing the interviews? Do we want to do it before our regular monthly meeting? I would prefer to. I feel like it's more fair to the candidate, but. Yes, I do too. Separate meeting. Can people do either Wednesday or Thursday, October 2nd or 3rd? Sure. Done. Wednesday, October 2nd. You good with that, Mark? I'll look at my brand. Yeah. Wednesday, October 2nd, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. it is. 6 p.m. You got that written down, Tom? October 2nd? Wonder. Wednesday, October 2nd, 6 p.m. Candidate interviews. And, and what's interesting is, um, you said, you asked me, when, when are there ever conflicting meetings with street park meetings? 
That's one. That's one. That's one. <laughs> you don't care who we appoint anyway. Done by six. Huh? Oh, you could be done by six. <laughs> We've set lab records before, but also we can do it frankly. Okay. But can you see the rules that they Oh, second, second. I'm oh, sorry. All right. I change it. I would entertain a motion. Okay. To uh, uh, I move that we uh, conduct any interviews on October 2nd at 6 p.m. All right. Motion, second for the discussion. All those favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, ayes have it. I was entertaining a motion to enter oh, executive, executive session. session. Uh, I'll make that mark to for his own. He's getting a little. We don't want to get a lot of space. Yeah, stretch out like that. So it's not like the SA 313. 313A3 is uh, the appointment for employment or evaluation of a public officer. You want to go to Can you? So, Donna, did you catch the least motion? It's cool enough in here. It's not. Are you on the diet? All right. I should have worn a long sleeve. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. Right. Right. Motion and a second. Further discussion. Shane, yeah. who, are we, who are we inviting to the executive session? Who needs to be? Who are we talking about? Who are we talking about? Tom? Recreation coordinator. You guys don't read your text messages, do you? Who are we inviting into executive session? Okay, just Tom. If we, we discussed it. Okay. okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Any ayes have it? The board is entering executive session at ten twenty.